TV slash blue politics. Okay, thank you, thank you. Uh, next, we have our dark lord and savior, DV. Uh, DV, thank you uh, for being here, uh, for joining in, for always just being a really good participant in everything that we do, uh, DV. Uh, so yeah, tell the world about yourself. Uh, yeah, so I'm from the much better Discord server. Um, look at Discord. Well, better Discord server in general. I feel like it's the best server on Discord. And if you disagree with me, you're an idiot. Uh, it's <laughs> politics.gg or discord.gg slash politics. Um, we are actually um, having an AMA with Vermin Supreme where he'll be interviewed by myself as a frog and a clown lady uh, next weekend. So that's going to be very fun. Um, hope to see you guys there. If you guys would like a server where you can not be a libertarian and you can disagree with the mods and call them morons without getting banned, come to my There's server shit. Love you guys. Okay. Uh, uh, um, uh, DB, like, Vermin? Who is this Vermin person? Just curious. Oh, God. How do you oh, not God. know Vermin you Supreme? Don't know Vermin what? Supreme. He's going to be very fair. fair. Okay, I'm going gonna, gonna to be very fair. So, so, Blue, Blue, politics, so Blue Politics actually had Vermin Supreme before I did. I'll admit it, but we're better, so fuck you guys. But he's a he's a very famous um I don't know very good so he's a, like a famous comedian guy I don't know if he's a comedian clown I don't know what the, what the fuck to call him he he's like a he wears a, a big boot on his head and he runs for president every year and goes around offering people free ponies it's very strange man but I he, love him he's a crazy okay. old political candidate basically okay all right <laughs> seems like uh, the rest of the well everyone uh, knows who this guy is. I'm out of the loop, um, but that's not unusual. All right, uh, thank you so much, TV. Um, moving on, uh, we have Jason Society back with us. How are you doing today, Jason? Oh, good. Um, yeah, I'm uh, Jason Society, uh, Jason underscore Society on Twitch, and uh, Jason Society, uh, just proper, on Twitter. Um, I'm uh, probably what you'd call a, a, a democratic socialist. Um, I have a background in music spent most of my life doing uh, politically tinged metal music uh from the left and um i uh do a lot of advocacy for uh, uh criminal justice reform especially where it comes to um nonviolent drug offenders um have a keen interest in uh definitely um domestic issues uh issues relating to workers rights things like that um you can um, check me out uh, just about every night I'm online. Um, you'll find me here on Prime's panels, even as walk-ons. <laughs> um, so uh, that's where you can catch me. Thank you, thank you. Uh, last but not least, we have GSU Gambit back with us. How are you doing, my friend? I'm doing great. How about yourself? All right. I'm happy to be here. The kids are about to be asleep, so I am ready to yell at people. <laughs> Perfect. I do right. gotta switch my camera too because I shared the wrong camera in StreamYard, so I'm gonna All go right. dark for a second. But yeah, sure, sure. All right, so I wasn't sure which one to start off with uh, first. Uh, can I get into the introduction? Oh, did maybe? I not skip? You? Yeah, it's okay. Oh, yeah, no, oh wow, this is it's, real problematic. It's not personal. You. It's your, you're very problematic. Oh, um, yeah, I try. Yeah, I'm sorry. No, that's actually that's a huge mistake. Uh, problematic fan, thank you. Uh, who was the new? Oh man, to, uh, brand new here. I'm like, oh yeah, fuck you. Uh, problematic fan, thank you for being here. Uh, not new to the closed uh, for open panels. We've had them there uh, quite a few times. Uh, the years for the open panel. Yeah, it's lovely to be here. I'm pretty new to the Twitch politics community. Um, you can follow me at problematic pan in both uh, Twitch and uh, Twitter, or TikTok if you're one of those people. And uh, I'm a libertarian, but I tend to be very progressive socially. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay. So uh, let's do it. Um, I said I wasn't sure which one to start off with, but um, blah, blah, blah. All right, let's, let's try. Um, let's try this one. Uh, topic one. With the withdrawal from Afghanistan, many are declaring uh, the war on terror to be over. Looking back, was this war ever worth fighting? Was there another path? Do we have fought in a different way? The civil liberties uh, weren't curtailed. Or was the, uh, this inevitable? Uh, do you even think that the war is truly over? So yeah, uh, people are saying you, you hear a lot in um, certain circles that the war on terror is over, that's this withdrawal from Afghanistan. Uh, is that signal? 
Um, but one, is that actually the case? And two, like, was this worth fighting to begin with? And if it was worth fighting, like, did it have to look exactly the way we, we did it, right? Uh, was there another path? Was this really the best that we could have done? So uh, we'll go around doing introductions, starting with uh, Captain James. Yo, yo. Um, yeah, no, I don't, I don't think that we had to, uh, to go to war in Afghanistan or Iraq. Um, I think that in Iraq, we've basically failed. We took a country that had, yes, a despot and yes, a, a dictator, and it was fucking horrible, but we made it even horribler. And uh, that's not good. That's not good. And we did the exact same thing in Afghanistan. So, yeah, like, probably not a great thing. Um, and obviously we failed. And I would love to hear what everyone else has to say. Wording. Uh, yeah, um, I, I recently had a debate about this with Connor, and I feel like generally it was a productive conversation. And really the emphasis is uh, no, uh, I don't feel it was really productive. And I think basically the problems we see that happen in Afghanistan are largely the same problems kind of... Uh, representative of military intervention is uh problems in communication intelligence um uh interest through policy makers and generally the destabilization of regions that lead to worse uh um consequences further down the road which are pretty demonstrable throughout every almost every single military intervention i would say there are very few select circumstances to kind of add some nuances where you can engage uh, in military conflict, but by the vast majority of it, I would say nah. Okay, counterpoints. Yeah, I'm, I, I hope the lesson that we can learn here is that large scale, I, I'm hoping large scale invasions are done in the 21st century. I, I, I really do. I'm not saying that that's true. I'm not saying that there isn't gonna be another terrorist attack that's gonna you know, draw us out in a similar way. But the, the whole point, uh, if you actually read Osama bin Laden's manifesto, was to uh, basically trigger the West in such a way as to launch a geographic land war in Asia so they could drain, or so they could drain our resources, uh, drain our blood, and then uh, unite the, the Islamic world against us. That was actually his plan. Um, it went to plan. We just didn't collapse, or at least haven't collapsed yet. And... You know, we, we've spent trillions of dollars. We There's hundreds of thousands, if not a few million people who have been killed in these conflicts, either directly or indirectly. And then what, what I'm hoping we can draw from this, uh, basically looking forward, is we need to target, uh, we need to target these things from like a law enforcement perspective. A traditional land war, hundreds of thousands of troops invading countries, holding them geographically and all that kind of stuff has been a disaster for a lot of people. And uh, I think we just need to concede that and then look at what we can pull out of the shit show. So I'll leave it there. Truly false. Um, yeah, I guess I'm going to be slightly different. Um, I think, I mostly think that this was an inevitable consequence of what happened, especially looking at America in 2001, right after 9-11. Um, we were going to go to war. We were looking for every chance to. And the fact that um, the Afghan government was refusing to give us Osama bin Laden, the best offer we had was hand transferred over to a third party, which obviously the U.S. was not going to find acceptable after 9-11. Um, we're obviously going to do that. Was there a better path? Yeah, probably. Um, our long-term nation building and stuff like that that we were trying to do isn't really the best way to do it. Uh, overall, uh, the war on terror as a whole actually hasn't been too terrible when you look at like what the U.S. has done in a lot of different areas outside of just Iraq and Afghanistan, if you include like Libya, where we're just there for air support, Syria, where we keep a couple troops on the ground and are mostly just there for air support. Um, a lot of this, these style of methods actually work and provide support to the, um, the counterinsurgency groups that are in the countries. So it's a really nuanced conversation about uh, the war on terror. Me. Uh, I actually agree with the first part of what Charlie Paul said, um, but uh, in terms of like there being a better way, I think that um, well, just what I know about the conflict and what I've researched into it, it, it seems like the, the issue was that we didn't go far enough in our nation building. Um, I feel like we should have had more troops there. Um, we should have done a lot more to hunt down uh, the Taliban and Al-Qaeda and any, any of these fighters when they were like in the outskirts and, and taking over little towns and shit. 
it should have been hunted down mercilessly. Um, we should have started uh, westernizing the culture there. Um, we sh should have uh, started um, <laughs> bring Western education to the area, not not this fucking like half-hearted thing where we're trying to make sure that they they still feel like they're in control of the country and there's like an Afghanistan government and shit. We should have just controlled the entire country, totally colonized the thing. And I think if we'd done that, while seeking out and destroying the, these fucks wherever they popped up, you, the people in Afghanistan today would be much better off, and we'd be much better off. Um, even though we didn't do that, it does seem like it was kind of a waste. Uh, let's go with Jason Slider. Um, I think that it was a travesty. I think that there were things that needed to be done there. I think getting uh, bin Laden was a, an important role that uh, that whole thing played. I do not think that we needed to be there the entirety of that time to do that. I think that there were many other ways we could have tackled that. Uh, like how we did, ultimately, using C SEAL Team 6, using covert ops, things like that. I don't think we needed the boots on the ground. I don't think that uh, providing the U.S. influence there actually made things any better. I think, if anything, it inflamed uh, tensions there. Um, I think that the way that our contractors, uh, what we're now finding out, the way some of our contractors acted towards women and children was absolutely abhorrent and did nothing but fuel the flames of the fire that we now are dealing with with the Taliban. Uh, ISIS and other um, Islamic extremist organizations. I think our best move would have been take out bin Laden as quickly as possible, as quietly as possible, get out, and let them deal with uh, how they need to rebuild their country on their own. I don't believe that every country uh, needs uh, what we would like to call a Western-style democracy. They need room to develop what works for them within their cultures and their countries and their regions. Uh, let's go to problematic pan this time. Okay. Yeah, the war, in uh, the war on terror and its consequences have been a disaster for the human race. I don't think it was ever worth it. If we take a look at the vast majority of terror attacks outside of 9-11, um, the, you know, the harm is statistically, it's insignificant. Now, morally, uh, yes, it has a huge effect on our nation. But if we take a look at all of the resources we've dedicated to, um, you know, stopping these occasional attacks and stuff, um, and we take into account, you know, all the money, all the lives, and all the lack of results. Uh, I think it's clearly not worth it, especially considering how many uh, civil liberties and stuff we lost um, due to it. Uh, the surveillance state has grown intensely since then. Um, I, I will say, though, that I am optimistic that hopefully this period is starting to come towards an end. If we take a look at public opinion, people are more generally anti-war now. Uh, I think that this, you know... I, I believe that this 20-year quagmire that we've had in the Middle East has woken up at least a, a decent amount of Americans to the futility of this um, nation-building projects that we like to um, carry out. And so I'm, I'm optimistic that there won't be the political will in the future to continue. Okay. Uh, yes, you can. Yeah, so my opinion on this hasn't really changed. If somebody coordinates an attack on... America on American soil. I'm all for uh, doing whatever it takes to get rid of those people. So uh, I absolutely support, uh, not exactly how things went down, but I absolutely support uh, going on the offensive and responding uh, with sending people to that country. So absolutely, I'm, I'm for that uh, in those situations. Um, like uh, somebody else said, I think it was Jason Society. I don't necessarily think we owe nations uh, nation building. Um, I think if they ask for it, then we can work with them. Even if we take out uh, somebody that's important to a country that's a imminent threat to Americans, I don't think we necessarily owe nation building. But um, yeah, generally, I'm in favor of retaliating against people who attack America or especially attack on American soil. Uh, truly, I want to ask you a quick question. Um, yep. About uh, you're saying that signs of Libya that produce prove positive, right? So. Um, the problem comes for me is when you make that assertion, there's a lot of problems. For example, the e economic sanctions that really led to a large scale, lot of destabilization in the region, which led to a lot of negative consequences. And so basically my concern is when you assert like the war ter on terror here, uh, like in Afghanistan, and Iraq were really negative, but these were positives. And my concern here is that basically as a whole, I feel that places like Libya suffered a lot of negative con consequences through these war on terror policies. And I would say is just war, the war on terror just didn't work. Like, e like places in Libya, they're a fucking hellhole. So like, 
basically it comes down to like why do we do all the war on terror like how many people are we willing to sacrifice or how how much are we willing to kind of affect these groups of people who are pretty well innocent just to like get rid of these small groups of people yeah and when i refer to libya as like a uh like a, a quote-unquote success i'm talking about like the uh the actual like military applications of it the country's been in a civil war for a while and mostly since mostly while we were doing our uh war on terror there uh it was uh inherent resolve i think was the operation between like libya and syria and stuff like that um these like when i say they were good they were militarily effective they did we got we got done there what we needed to get done now we removed isis from both of these countries really effectively and that's because we took more of a backseat role in the supplemental support role um but yeah i would i would consider these like military military successes well, okay, so that kind of makes me curious because when we look at like uh, you know kind of the the immigration patterns of like the the fallout of like the what would you call it like the Sunni awakening in Iraq and then the ensuing civil war with ISIS and then the Arab Spring and then kind of the the inter-religious inter-ethnic conflict and the governmental authoritarian crackdowns uh, because we had kind of a hands-off approach um, but we were willing to kind of jump in just enough to fuck with shit towards our desired ends there was all these like hyper negative externalities so for instance like libya i think is a failed a failed state that's still geographically divided by between like three different political factions um i think there's open air slave markets because there's people from west africa trying to make it into europe and they get kidnapped and captured in libya and then sold as uh, manual labor um so there, there's like a whole bunch of like hyper negative externalities that while Gaddafi was a piece of shit um, who basically, uh, he's responsible for the Lockerbie bombing, literally uh, funding and blowing up a plane over Scotland in the 1980s. Um, you know, basically knocking him out, but then having no game plan was almost worse than Iraq and Afghanistan, where we were too heavy-handed. So it, it, it's kind of like, um, I, I don't know, it, it's kind of like you break it, you buy it kind of thing. And, and I think the problem is we keep fucking breaking everything. Um, that's... I don't know. I'll leave it there. How are we too heavy-handed? How are we too heavy-handed? Uh, well, I would say that I don't differentiate between military and diplomacy, and I would say that in people's mind, they combined Abu Ghraib, Guantanamo Bay, CIA black sites, and a whole host of nefarious shit that we did in the War on Terror into one crazy amalgamation of America promoting secular liberal democracy at home, but willing to be able to indefinitely detain people and torture them as long as it was done in ways that we could say, oh, well, you know, is it torture? And then we could argue it in, you know, like legal battles. So well, I, yeah, I, I would so say we broke a lot of norms in order to uh, conduct our war this oh, way. Okay, but they, they, these are not Americans, right? So they don't, they're not really entitled to the rights and privileges. Of wait, 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 wait. Doobie. Some of these were Americans. Some of these were Americans. Let him finish. Let him finish. Let him finish. So, so what, what I'm wondering, um, if you have like mm -hmm. a, an issue with like Abu Ghraib or whatever, right, or, or quote unquote torture. So mm -hmm. if, we, if we capture a leader of the Taliban or Al Qaeda, and mm -hmm. he he might has information, but he's not giving it, to, and he's not giving it to us, and we need that information to prevent further attacks. Like, why wouldn't we torture him? Have you heard of the thing okay, called Geneva because, Conventions? Uh, Hold on, Wordy, before we get into, yeah, like, a, before we get into a moral thing. Um, but what I would say, th this is actually kind of my point, because you're, you're combining, like, three different concepts and three different historical events into a single historical event. Abu Ghraib was not intelligent or intelligence folks going in in a smart, methodical, psychological way in order to torture people for information. This was National Guardsmen left to their own devices, just randomly deciding to terrify Iraqi detainees with guns and humiliating sexual positions and stress positions and all that kind of shit. There was no interrogation. They were just torturing these people for fun. And that's what was documented in the photos was there was no supervisors and there was no intelligence gathering. There was literally just National Guardsmen who are basically, for those of you who don't know, kind of on the lower tier of training and experience, just torturing Iraqis for shits and giggles. So, no, I don't think that, like, uh, if you're trying to make a moral point about whether or not Guantanamo Bay is uh, morally acceptable, I don't think you should be using the word Abu Ghraib in the same sentence. Yeah, I, I think I think you're... Uh, maybe misremembering because th this was interrogation, 
Right, they were yeah, doing these things to break their spirits and to, to wear them down. Wasn't yeah, the one dude just... waterboarded 270 something times or something? And, I think that was one gave... though. You're mixing stuff. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah, but, but Abu Ghraib was also interrogation, right? Uh, there, I forget that guy's name, but um, it, it was it wasn't random torture. It was torture under the guise of interrogation. Come under on. the guise of interrogation. Okay. <laughs> it was torture. That's stupid. Wait, torture they, is purpose? Okay. I guess they, there's they, one they, 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 got they got no good information out of it. From it was ups, torture. Right? Well, hold on. No, they, there, was, there was authorization no. that came down from higher ups. It wasn't just like random ass people torturing people for fun. All right. Everybody yell at Doobie for the next 10 minutes. I'm going to pull up information because I feel like this is absolutely false. Yeah. But... Uh, yeah. I mean, if I'll go with you. Um... On that. No, 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 no. You, you, you don't research. You yell at Doobie. Oh, you, why don't you I'll tell research. Me, okay. Why don't you tell me why you don't think it's okay. Okay. To, so to the, the problem, the problem comes but. is when in terms of harsh military encounters, uh, all the kind of behavior itself is what we're trying to pursue is the, the issues of uh, intelligence. Basically, our intelligence systems are really fucked, right, is the, uh, the bureaucracy and the intelligence operation like the CIA, whatever. And basically these two, the concept of intelligence failure is we don't really have any idea, so we're basically trying to fumble around in the dark and figure out information. The problem comes through torture and harsh military intervention is that you don't really resolve the situation. You instead worsen the situation, make it more difficult for you to retrieve information. So everything you're saying like through torture and such or interrogation, harsh measures doesn't really actually bring you accurate information and instead drives people to give information that you want and find satisfying instead of providing factual information and the problem comes is when you engage in behavior like that and then whenever the indigenous people there figure out you've been doing that that makes it harder to collaborate collaborate with them because they're like well, if they tortured this one dude who was a bad guy, maybe they'll torture me next. Or maybe they tortured the innocent dude, maybe they'll torture me next. And that's the relationship that forms when you engage in these behaviors. You make the people that you're trying to work with or trying to use to figure out where Osama bin Laden is, and it leads to negative externalities here. Significant ones. Yeah, see, I think I think what you're saying is half true. Um, there, there actually have been studies on this. They found that torture is sometimes an effective way to get information out of people, good information out of people when you need it. Right, so yeah, sometimes that's, it's not useful. Sometimes not. I would like you to link whatever studies situation. you're referring to. Sure, sure, I, can, I can do that in a second. When you're dealing with situations of life and death, as, as they were in Afghanistan, in, in any, any of these of these places where they use torture, I, I think it can be justifiable to use it, right? If, if there's a chance that you'd get good information out of it. And yeah, I, okay, and I, and I agree. No, I just, can you tell me the, the results optics, of that? I agree that uh, the optics, so I just, wait, one second, I agree, I agree. Mr. Frog? Oh, God, one second. I want to, I want to, just really quickly. I agree that the optics are really bad, right? And that people find out, oh God, they're torturing it's people. More than that. that. That might drive people to further hate the United States and further like join like terrorist movements against the United States, right? Obviously. Um, That's called. But I, I, don't think that, I don't think that means that we need to take it off the table. Killing people does that too, right? Shooting someone's uh, uncle because he's uh, in the Taliban also pisses off the entire family. So I, I don't think he's just- Yeah, that's called blowback. We are, we, we've known about that since 9-11. That's, that's a big reason that, you know, they hate us uh, is the blowback that because of the actions we've done throughout history. Yeah, so basically um, it works like so, this. So, but hold on, hold on, hold on. I just linked something in the chat. Um, it's in by uh, humanrightsfirst.org and uh, it states the exact opposite of what Doobie just said, which is that torture in fact does not work. It's unreliable and it doesn't get you better results than they torture. tell you whatever you want to hear because you're torturing them and they want you to stop. That makes a lot of sense. Anything. See, that like, makes a lot of sense. I they think will about admit that. To anything, you're being tortured. You, that, if somebody's see, pulling out your fingernails. As someone who doesn't like pain. Simula simulating drowning you and they're saying, you're going to tell us. You will tell them anything they want to hear to get them to stop at a certain point. Anything okay. that sounds good or plausible or whatever just to make it stop. Okay, Ken, and, and then I, I would like to clarify what actually happened at Abu Ghraib. So, uh, a general and a uh, who was demoted as a result of the incident and Secretary Rumsfeld authorized certain uses of enhanced interrogation techniques, some of which were done at this prison. But those didn't include sodomy. Those didn't include rape. Those didn't include, like, wiping shit on people. They, they didn't include any of that stuff. It was mostly sleep, uh, sleep deprivation, sensory overwhelming, 
uh, temperature uh, exposure techniques and also the use of military dogs. This was all authorized by the general. And it's also pretty clear, based off of the photos and the evidence, that you basically don't see any of the fucking CIA personnel involved in any of the shit that's used to substantiate the evidence against the, the uh, soldiers who were convicted of crimes by the same administration for prisoner abuse, for abuse and torture. So no, Doobie, this isn't a part of some concerted fucking 10 head goddamn interrogation fucking program. This was 17 fucking assholes who decided that because the CIA was using enhanced their interrogation, they could treat these people however the fuck they wanted. And they did so, including outside of the, the enhanced interrogation that was authorized at the time. And as a result, they served serious prison sentences. Like a dozen of them served like five years and then uh, two or three of them served like more than 10. So no, this is not the same thing. And the conflation is part of the problem. Yeah, Doobie, okay, you're I part think, of the problem. You oh, hear it? Gosh, shut up. Wait one second. Yeah, so I think that's a fair response. Frog. So if you're saying, so, <laughs> if you're saying that that enhanced interrogation, quote unquote, torture, uh, mm -hmm. was authorized, but these specific things weren't part of that. These people weren't part of that authorization. Okay, that's fair, right? Mm -hmm. But I don't, I don't think that addresses the. Um, and I'm going to post a study really quickly if you guys. Okay. Can, uh, I, I was waiting for it. I was like, where is it going to be? Yeah, it's in Twitch chat. Um, and this was uh, 2019, 2020. This study was done. And they found, he found that, yes, sometimes it is an effective way to get information quickly from people, right? The good information. Not always, but sometimes, right? So given there's a possibility that this could be useful to get information, good information that could save people's lives, I really don't see a good reason to take it off the table. Right? Now, we can say that it should be done responsibly by qualified people and not just random ass National Guard members, right? Sure. Um, Can I? What type yeah. of? I want to know what type of quality information you think we were getting from them because most of these people, very low ranking, don't know much. We'll like, never you're making know. it. You're making it sound I, like what we did was, oh my God, there's a nuclear bomb that's going to go off, and this one person make, knows the a, deactivation code. Quick, let's figure it out. Like, it yes, of course, not show about that though. This conversation okay. doesn't make sense. We're never going to know the information that we did or did not get from these people. So talking about what possible information could we get is silly, right? No, it's not because I basically some of this stuff has been documented. So one of the examples that uh, Donald Rumsfeld used in his own defense because there were conversations about whether or not he was going to be prosecuted for war crimes was specifically Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, one of the architects of the 9-11 bombing. And basically what Khalid Sheikh Mohammed allegedly said, again, this is Donald Rumsfeld testifying to this in his own defense when he's being considered for like a prosecution under war crime law, okay? Um, he basically said that uh, Khalid Sheikh Mohammed was referencing some, you know, random fucking hadith that said that uh, people who fight in the name of the prophet or whatever, they can't divulge information unless they basically either lie or they're under duress. Those are the only times that they can reveal information that might fuck over uh, jihadists or Islamists or whatever. And so what Khalid Sheikh Mohammed allegedly said is that you have to do enhanced interrogation against jihadists. Otherwise, they're not morally capable of surrendering information to you. Also, Khalid Sheikh Mohammed allegedly divulged the fact that Osama bin Laden was using couriers, which is the way that we tracked him back down to his residence in Abbottabad and ultimately culminated in the assassination of Osama bin Laden. So while this is tainted information, while this is Donald Rumsfeld making excuses for why he authorized torture in the fucking first place, this is part of the problem. Part of the problem is we talk about how we're a city on a hill. We're a liberal democratic. We only kill people when it matches with our Oh, Connor, your that. computer. Look yeah. at this. The ISIS is trying to silence him. I completely not to get agree that freedom with what he just said. Yeah, what stop he just said was completely freedom true. message. Stop, stop, stop downloading porn. Okay. Um, and whoa, whoa, whoa! whoa. We'll <laughs> never tell. Never tell a person okay. to stop downloading porn. That uh, is, guys, all this, uh, take all, all the, that's take pretty this tyrannical of you. Uh, <laughs> this is what happens to your internet connection when you talk with me. Okay, don't do it. <laughs> <sighs> Hey, that look, actually wouldn't be surprising. We recently, but, and it's the wife downloading porn, too, so it's not me. We recently got BPF <laughs> banned. Okay, so just watch it, dude. Your days are numbered. <laughs> but, 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 the, but the point being is that, like, torture as a way to get enhanced interrogation or, like, uh, better information is a contested subject. Uh, but at the same time, is this the path that we want to be going down? Because you have to understand, Osama bin Laden was partially motivated to do what he did in the first place because of our interference in the first place. So how do we not just continually perpetuate the cycle of violence between international jihadist organizations and the United States government? Well, we take out Osama bin Laden. No, I'm I know that doesn't end it.
joke. Yeah, it just starts the cycle. But, but like, all right, so if we're going to believe in going to war, like an attack on American soil, I don't, I can't think of what, what, if not that, then what? Right? No, nah, we, we still respond to whatever happens. Absolutely. I, I think the I think the problem is when you over respond like we did with 9-11 with two land invasions of sovereign nations. That that's kind of the fucking problem. And that's where um, there's this guy named Phil Gursky. Uh, he's been on like Destiny and Vosh a couple of times or whatever. He's basically talking about how we need to shift this the global war on terror from a military model, basically basically to like a law enforcement counterterrorism model. And I think that's appropriate because if you have a suicide bombing with a hundred casualties, you don't invade a fucking country with 300,000 troops. You send 12, you send a SWAT team after the fucking people who did the attack. And then you either capture them or you kill them. That's what you do in coordination with local governments. Wait, but, but if that uh, group of people is is part of a large group of people that are continuing that that not only assisted in planning this attack, but but will also plan further attacks in the future after you take out this group of people, because of course that's continuing the cycle of violence. Why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you take all of them out? And to do that in Afghanistan, yeah. we would need we had to invade because of Taliban were, were protecting Al Qaeda. Yeah, because yeah, we agree can't with take this, all right? of them out. Let's out the way. We can't take all Wait. of them out. They were an insurgent group. They weren't, weren't the like Taliban and Al Qaeda always at odds, actually. The no. Taliban weren't protecting no. Al Qaeda. I think what you mean yes, to say is the Taliban was acting as a buffer. No, no the Taliban were... was actively protecting Al Qaeda. Yeah. They refused. They, they refused to give us any information. They weren't giving us information. They weren't. Uh, they refused to hand over Osama bin Laden after 9/11. Uh, the Taliban was actively in the way. That's why we. That's why, like, I, I like the idea of like what Connor's talking about the the, the quote unquote like police style of tactics. Um, but that that just really wasn't an option in the case of Afghanistan because we 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 didn't have the ability to have cooperation with the local governments. That, that in, just in, wasn't a choice. In okay, the I different it and they're right, they're right, everybody. Okay. Okay. In the the differentiation here being Iraq versus Afghanistan. So I would agree with Truly Faze that we basically said, hey, turn over Osama bin Laden and all the Al Qaeda people. Taliban said, nah, fuck you, we can't do that. And then we're like, all right, well, we just had three thousand people died and two buildings blown up, so we're coming for that ass. That, that's understandable from a descriptive standpoint. What I would say is it's been 20 years. We've spent like two or three trillion dollars. We've lost like 10,000 fucking troops and have probably either directly or indirectly killed like a few hundred thousand people. It's time to change the way that we do this Wait, fucking thing. Nobody said that we shouldn't have maybe left sooner. I think everybody critiqued that, but we know that when somebody does an attack on American soil, if we retaliate, it's almost understood at that point that we're going to probably lose American lives, right? So it's, it's. I mean, it's sad, right? We don't want it, but when people aggress, like, we've never lived through a time where there was, like, a war on American soil, and we would never want to, right? Because we'd be the insurgency that dies during these things. So I'm perfectly fine with our government responding to threats on our American soil okay. as aggressively as possible. I might not agree with staying there 20 years, but... So, then, yeah, but... I have a, I have a quick question, GSU. Would you prefer that, like, let's say that the Taliban support a uh, terrorist attack, suicide bombing happens in, let's just say, Houston, Texas. It kills a hundred people, okay, down at a fucking shopping mall or some shit, right? Would you support reinvading Afghanistan, or would you support basically like thirty to fifty guys going to Afghanistan, finding everybody who's responsible, and then either arresting or killing them? Which option seems preferable? I mean, it, it really depends on what intelligence we have at the time and what other threats that we know about. I can't, I can't really answer that because, I mean, it, in the stakes that you gave, it sounds like it's possible to kill those targeted people, right? But I don't, I don't know that what the situation that you're laying out, if, if that was analogous to what happened uh, for 9-11, it, right? It's, it's not analogous to what happened to 9-11. It's more of a situation that we face right now. Um, so I, I, th I think it, it always has to be proportionate. So for instance, like if there's a terrorist attack that kills a few dozen people, like uh, the, the, the bombings in Kenya, the, the bombing of U.S. embassies, the bombing of the USS Cole, um, I would say that rather than doing a land invasion, you have to have a proportional response. And on top of that, you have to continue to go after those organizations. But what yeah. I'm saying, yeah, the, you might be, um, you might, I, I'll, I'll be clear here. I'm not saying tit for tat. I'm not saying you only go after those 30 dudes and then you stop. 
I'm saying that helps you identify the organization and then you just go after them root and branch wherever they are. But instead of doing a land invasion with a few hundred thousand conventional troops, you have a few special forces, SWAT team, local government folks, like all that kind of stuff. They do the work instead of a land invasion. Yeah, I think I'll make a statement that everybody might agree with. If it's possible to only take out those that targeted us and that neutralize the threat, we're almost always going to be in favor of that. Um, okay. If I can jump in here, there. Okay, so first off, Doobie, the paper you linked was not a study. That was dude giving his own personal critiques on how um, terror um, torture investigations happen. The, one of the cited issues that he said was that basically the limitation of the actual factual knowledge on the effectiveness of torture is hidden behind a lot of walls set up by the CA. It's going to be hidden probably for the rest of the, our entire existence. So we can never fully know to what degree. Even in like the 20th century, he was saying the amount of information available was sparse. So we can't make that assumption that torture is effective. We have to be able to rely on the data. Until we can prove that, we can either go agnostic or we can go negative to determine like the, the externalities. Two is um, talking about in terms of uh, GSU. I think the best way to phrase this is appropriate responses, right? Is when something happens, when a threat occurs, then you have to ask what response is appropriate right i would personally say sending an entire military invasion for a smaller organization which is a minority within the group but within the nation is not a significant way to go about trying to eliminate that group right these the, the, this is actually a cited issue with in terms of terrorist uh, operations is our intelligence is really flawed in the ability to gather intelligence compared to traditional armies where you have that clearly defined military versus arm intelligence here is they can blend in just so easily and that makes it really freaking difficult for us to track anybody and i think this is the whole issue is our intelligence operations our ability to gather information be able to effectively parse it through because there are a lot of signals that occur and when those signals occur it's really difficult for both the analysts and the uh, policymakers to kind of respond effectively so i would say is until we can further develop our intelligence communities we should really avoid using um a, uh, like a really large military responses or i would say maybe uh even like degree of sending smaller operations is i can't trust intelligence operations and i'm not even sure the agencies can trust the intelligence operations to effectively get the point across i okay but i i think it's better than you think so for instance like signals intelligence the interception of like uh you know communications or whatever that's pretty good also you can use especially when you're not constantly blowing the fuck up out of countries you can develop friends on the ground who will help you understand the geopolitics the factions the players all that kind of stuff and part of the problem is when you invade and you're just killing the fuck out of everybody people don't want to help you so that that's kind of one of the problems whereas if you took a more nuanced law enforcement counterterrorism approach you're going to open up these avenues for uh counterintelligence and intelligence one of one of the great complaints of the um of the pre 911 CIA officers is basically that human intelligence leading up to the CIA was gutted um so th this was part of like uh the Bill Clinton like military cutbacks or whatever as they said we don't need human intelligence we don't need people out in the field getting to know people anymore we just need a monitor in intercepts and monitor communications well you're only getting like a tenth of the picture when you're just watching cell phone traffic so so that's where i'm saying it's like you you can scale back the military stuff um while still upping the intelligence the counterterrorism, and all that kind of stuff and you're not losing anything and then on top of that we also have to think about this i, I hate to say it but we have to think about this thing within dollars and cents uh, like i was a, a logistician in the united states military um a squad with an mrap which is an armored vehicle with uh the jammers and the the body armor and the guns and all that kind of stuff you're talking about seven we spend like seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars just to equip 12 guys and those 12 guys can be taken out by a bomb that's made out of 50 dollars of raw materials in three hours worth of labor so we're spending 750k they're spending 300 and, and that scales completely in the war on terror and that's actually what osama bin laden was counting on he was expecting us to do this he was expecting us to spend three three trillion dollars over the course of fucking two decades and not get shit for it so it, it's kind of like um uh you know, bull in a china shop kind of shit it's like if you if you shoot the a bull in the china shop with a with a fucking dart gun or some shit and it punctures a hole in its ass that's a real injury 
But if the bull turns around and fucking kicks the entire store to shit, then that's a bigger fucking problem. And that's where I'm saying, like, if if the issue we have to have a proportionate response, we have to have an intelligent response. We can't let shit slide. Absolutely not. Uh, but the we have to learn the lesson that large scale land invasions cannot be the response to terrorism. What was the alternative in Afghanistan? I'm I'm not talking about two I'm not talking about two thousand one. Okay. Okay. Well, well so, I think that's okay. a really good question, though, just because, like, the original question was kind of like, what world would we have wanted? Um, like, what what do we think would have been a better alternative? Or, do, like, it, was there ever a way to go into a, Afghanistan and somehow, like, surgically remove the, uh, the Al-Qaeda from it without disrupting the Taliban if they were uh if the Taliban were protected that, like they were protecting the uh okay. that that that's the hard question and honestly I would leave that to like American special forces and CIA to tell us what they think would be possible because basically what you're talking well, about like sorry go ahead no no I, I was just gonna basically agree with you I, I think that we assume that these intelligence agents help us at a number one superpower along with our military is silly, right? We assume that these people don't have the intelligence to do the things that we're talking about. If we did a land invasion, I would assume that our intelligence thought that was the best thing to do. Now, if you think our, if you're like Rob Noor, you think all of our intelligence agents just want to go to war all the time, then yeah, I can't argue back against that. But we have to assume that these people had the information that they had available, and these are the decisions that they made. So maybe from there, like, standpoint this was the most logical thing to do um if i if i could respond here connor you've had a little bit so basically um there's two two schools of thoughts um there's the uh, human cognition limits and then there's the structural limits and the problem comes is whether you can assert a little bit of both right is humans get a lot of information right intelligent operations i would say generally some assert that it's not but generally they're good at getting a large swath of information right but um uh, channeling through that uh, figuring out through it and kind of sifting through it takes a lot of fucking time and the unfortunate reality is our our intelligence operations are generally not that great at it right if i understood from the past like past arguments i've heard is that in um in terms of afghanistan we didn't really have a plan we didn't have a full understanding of the picture we kind of tried to like generally put these groups into one area but there are like such regional differences that it's really difficult to kind of like make them cohesively work together right it's like um being texans versus like being a new yorker right if you just suddenly put them together they're not gonna fucking work together and it's like like made a little more extreme there and that problem itself is kind of the issue with intelligence and then you not even talking about like the policymakers congress the president or like mi military generals is their uh, receptivity to these uh, these uh, an analysis and these uh, channels is going to be a real problem. Like whenever um, uh, what's this guy who worked for Nixon, the the really famous Kissinger? Uh, Kissinger, Kissinger basically had a has a lot of motivations, right? He had a lot of motivations in getting Nixon to make certain policy decisions. And the problem comes is, in order to make effective empirical decisions, I would say is generally I mean, not capable. You're agreeing with everything that I said, right? No. You're saying that there are inherent inefficiencies in, in gathering data and perusing that data. So maybe this was the best plan given that they didn't have the best information available. You're agreeing but, with me. No, I'm not. But, but you're just <laughs> saying it in a lot more words. This is the oh, he's worried. The military there, there's abortion abortion political. complex to get rich. <laughs> what he's saying is there's political motivations as well. I, I think the clearest way to demonstrate that it's not just like these fact-finding logicians going through the data and finding out the best result is the fact that we went into Iraq, right? Now, it, I, I clearly that was not them going through the data. So I think it's safe to assume that a lot of the what, motivation behind this was political. What do you mean political. by not them going through the data? I'm not. I'm... Well, like that... the, the intelligence data. Yeah, like, for example, Bush came in, literally cherry-picked data in order to assert, like, invasion. Uh, as, either that was Iraq or Afghanistan. I'm not sure which one, but... That would have been Yeah, so... But, but, there, but there is there's a book that, like, if you doubt me for a fucking heartbeat, I, I recommend you read it. It's something called The the, Heart, the Art of Intelligence. It's, called by, it's written by Henry Crumpton. He's a former uh, CIA analyst. And he literally says that in 2001, uh, like, summer of 2001, he walks into Donald Rumsfeld's office and he says, like, hey... Um, I, I think not, uh, Al Qaeda is a big deal. They're gearing up for attack. We just had the USS Cole attack last year. This is going to be a fucking problem. And Donald Rumsfeld literally looks him in the eyes and he says, can you tie this to Iraq? He says, no. And Donald Rumsfeld says, 
uh, call me back when you can tie it to Iraq. And when we're talking about, so Doobie was kind of asking, like, do you feel this way about Afghanistan? Like, could we have not invaded Afghanistan? I think that was possible. Uh, from like a from a literal level, it was possible, but I think we need to remember the amount of like fucking raw bloodlust that Americans had at the time, where they're like they literally just saw three thousand people butchered on live television. They didn't want to fucking talk peace. They didn't want to negotiate a diplomatic deal with the Taliban. They wanted all of Al Qaeda's fucking heads on a platter served up on a like, literally like at Ka Kabul fucking airport. Every single fucking Al Qaeda person's head on a fucking platter, and anything short of that was going to necessitate invasion. So I think Afghanistan was kind of something that was going to happen no matter what. I think Iraq was the uh, Donald Rumsfeld in particular, but the Bush administration in general, capitalizing on the uh, rage of the American public at the time to levy it into a geopolitical goal that was pretty much unrelated to the original war on terror. So I want to agree with everything Counterpoints just said, with the exception of that the entire American public wanted, uh, had a bunch of bloodlust. I mean, I, I was a part of, I, I would like to the majority. other half. Okay, I, the, enough, the, enough had a... Enough, sure. Yeah, enough, sure. and that but basically I, drives, like, drives like, the, like, the vocal minority drives the, uh, the perceptions of the populace, right? Like, exactly, well, there, and, there I, and I would like to think, like, I... There was over there. I mean, seriously, like, there, I know that we were still dealing with, with things that were legitimate to... Um, occurrences that were big deals in the country, but there were a lot of people that wanted to exploit our sentiment. There were a lot of people that wanted to ex exploit what happened here for their own gain. And Namely, they, they pushed people. They pushed people. Namely, the people who this. did it. Well, right. can I? Uh, can they Captain A. Jones? Can, Captain A. Jones, can you indulge my conspiracist mind for a second? Um, so, so uh, KBR uh, is a company that you can Google. It's like a, it's it's a subsidiary of Halliburton. Um, they're the people who basically helped with the majority of the civilian logistics when it came to the invasions of Afghanistan and Iraq. They spent the 80s and 90s basically setting up the logistics change in third-party country uh, like contracts in order to do nation building. And they were the folks who were uh, basically responsible for a whole bunch of nation building in Africa, but also uh, for contracts in the Middle East as well. Um, I want to say Dick Cheney and Donald Rumsfeld, but I know for a fact Dick Cheney had trade had like they were like the fucking on the board of Halliburton and on top of that like Donald Rumsfeld was the intel consultant for Bush senior during the Iran Iraq war he was literally partially responsible for inflaming that shit and pretty much um I think the only reason why we didn't invade Iraq in 1992 was because we knew there wasn't enough support for it from Arab allies and we put on sanctions on Iraq for like 20 fucking years basically completely crippling their economy and what what Donald Rumsfeld asking in the year 2000 can you tie al-qaeda to iraq because if you can't i don't give a shit is that it was a geopolitical goal to topple saddam hussein and to have regime change in iraq long before fucking 9 11 was even long before 9 11 occurred so so that's kind of where i'm saying it's like um the these conflicts of interest where it gets conspiracy theory is um bush paid bin laden to do the terrorist attack right that's where it jumps the fucking Wait, shark. Where's game. Revolt? But, I gotta find him. <laughs> but but um, but at the same time, where it doesn't jump the conspiracy theory shark for me is uh, like Rahm Emanuel. Uh, I think he has like a great quote, which is like, "Never let a tragedy go to waste." Never let um, a crisis go to waste. Yeah. Right, and, and and that's where I would say a lot of entrenched interests who already had regional geopolitical goals capitalized on 9-11, knowing that they could levy uh, pu uh, public American support into these wars. And I think we have to be really fucking careful going forward, because GSU, you were kind of asking, like, well, how do we respond in an appropriate way when somebody hits us? W what's the appropriate response? I kind of think, like, it has to scale. Um, it has to be appropriate, and we cannot... If, if we learn anything from the war on terror, it's the fact that we cannot have an emotional response to uh, to violence it, because we've seen we've seen what's happened and i mean again like we we have to tally the cost it's probably between like uh 200,000 to 1.2 million civilians dead either directly or indirectly from the war on terror and then it's two uh, it's probably a half dozen to a dozen failed nations in the middle east and north africa like this is this is a problem and we contributed a lot to it yeah that was yeah. hella based though bro like that I mean, that was literally based as fuck i um yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I mean I'm elucidating I, that. <laughs> well, no, like, I, I don't think that any of the shit that you just said is a conspiracy theory. 
as a former conspiracy theorist, I don't think that that's. I mean, those are literal just facts. If we start saying Bush 9/11, did 9/11, did 9/11, I'm out. Let's, <laughs> no. let's give let's give IGH a chance. Yeah, I mean, I don't. I do disagree. I, I want to agree with you. I want to say that we're going to logically look through all of these things. The cost of war is always going to be astronomically high. I think we would then start to allow things that I don't think should be allowed. I, like, I don't, it, it sucks because there's human lives involved, right? Like, at the end of the day, that's what sucks about this. But I don't know about young. You cut out. Um, Oh, nah. I heard that. He's getting I heard I don't know about y'all. Okay. Silence. Yeah, I don't know what just happened. Oh, there we but, go. Um, there we go. Yeah. Um, like, I like, you know, living in a country where I don't have to worry about some of these things. So if we respond irrationally um, because we're responding emotionally to certain attacks like this, I think I'm almost always going to be okay with it. Now, I do think, like, I think what Captain was bringing up, people using this, uh, and maybe that was kind of, People using this to, to also achieve other goals. I think those things with our intelligence community is always going to be the case. I don't like that, but like I'm always okay. generally going to be on the side of like. I want to put something out though. You said you said that an emotional response is okay, but do you understand that the emotional response, the reason that people have that emotion is because of what is being pushed out into the public sphere. By well, those wait, who have an on, interest wait. in, in there's creating two things, some right? kind of sentiment. There's two things, right? There's propaganda after the attack. But there's also the attack itself, right? And we can look at those two events in isolation, and we can say that a lot of people had like a visceral reaction to the attack itself. Now, whether it was further propagandized to support the war, that's what I'm definitely going to agree with you, like absolutely 100%. But I think most people that saw 9-11 looked at that and said this is something that america shouldn't allow and us sending troops to yeah, kill um, people is okay oh, in G gsu i, I think, sorry i think oh, well, i just uh, i just want to make a, a little comparison though like gsu i think like what we mean by because like I, I think yeah the 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 response should have been proportionate to the act like we we don't go invading a country because they killed a bunch of our civilians we kill a bunch of them um, we kill 10 times more of them or something like that. I don't know. Insert a really tough American general line here. But, like, I think, like, it, like it, if we boil this down to, like, an example that's really personal, like, what if you and you're not in a open relationship? Uh, what if you, uh, what you go going? walk in? Hold on. What if you walk oh. in on your partner and they're, and they're cheating on you with a, another person? And, and now, you know, your feelings, your emotional response in that moment. You know, if you if you let your emotional response get to you in Minecraft, mm -hmm. you're gonna hit them with your diamond pickaxe. You know what I mean? Until they blow up and you gain their items, like on, that's what you're uh, gonna is do. Is on their waist? Uh, what we're what what we're advocating for is like not doing that. Like you know, maybe like being like, you, God damn it, that is really fucked up, and walking away. You know, because that's the correct thing to do. I think and maybe I, like you know, I, I think like these are two different situations. I agree with get, you. Get you. I agree with your resolution of, of finding your partner cheating for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that maps on to uh, the World Trade Center, right? Yeah, let's go fair. to uh, DB. Um, so I, I've, I've been kind of mulling this out for the last few minutes, but um, you guys have some like criticisms for like Rahm Emanuel saying, hey, never let a, a crisis go to waste or whatever. Um, and I'm wondering why you guys would have an issue with that. I mean, if there is a crisis, some kind of catastrophe, and it gives you the, the political willpower um, within the populace to wipe out a rival, why not use it if, if it benefits the country overall? But does can it I, benefit the country overall? Can, can I answer this, actually? Mm. Yeah, go for it. Um, so, so basically, like, another thing that everybody should Google is something called the Rigel Report. R-I-E-G-L-E. I still fucking read uh, that. Yeah, the, the, the Rigel Report. It basically documents how during the Iran-Iraq War, we sold Iraq dual-use chemicals that they used in order to produ uh, produce like VX, uh, botulism, anthrax, all the things that we accused them of having during the War on Terror. The reason why we knew that they had it is because we sold it to them originally. 
we were using them as a pawn when Iran fell to the Revolutionary Shah um, in order to basically use them as a buffer province against uh, use them as a buffer province against uh, Saudi Arabia. That way, Saudi Arabia wouldn't also fall. Okay, Th this is a geopolitical Machiavellian play in order to uh, basically safeguard Saudi interest. I'm not going to pretend that oil isn't important, but I'm also not going to pretend that our fucking hands are clean in this. When we're literally fucking sure. selling people, when we're selling people fucking anthrax and botulism and fucking nerve gas to drop on their fucking opponents, then we turn around and because they fucking launch Scud missiles into like Israel, Saudi Arabia and fucking Kuwait or whatever, we turn around and we wag our fucking finger and we say, no, 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 Iraq, it's bad of you to use chemical weapons. And even though we sold you the fucking chemical weapons, now we're going to fucking invade. Th this is the fucking, this is the double speak of like, yeah, sure. Do I think America is maybe less evil on the fucking world stage compared to a whole bunch of other powers? Yeah, sure. But at the same time, like, I'm not going to pretend that we didn't literally sell fucking nerve gas to the fucking people that two decades later we started a war because they had fucking nerve gas. Like, this is a fucking problem. And when you say, like, don't let a good crisis go to waste or we should do these things uncritically, that, like, the my frustration with that is that we are not the power brokers. We're not the fucking people in the boardroom making the decisions. We're the fucking pawns. We're the people who see the terrorist attack. And then we go fight for fucking apple pie and strip clubs and fucking whiskey. And then we get our limbs blown off. We come back to a shitty fucking uh, healthcare system. And then people made fucking, you know, millions or billions of dollars off of our fucking efforts. So, yeah, American hegemony is better than the alternative. But there's still some really evil nefarious shit that i just think we have to look square in the eyeballs yeah, and I, I, I agree completely that uh you know we're better on the world stage but, but if we did all this stuff that doobie's recommending it'd be a lot harder to you know i i I don't see what di would differentiate us from any of the other fucking evil regimes that we criticize throughout like the 20th century we, we, like, like i i I literally do not, like, like, if you were like, hey, uh, don't squander any fucking crisis, use propaganda to propagandize your people, it's okay to manipulate people into war, and it's okay to fucking have doublespeak as long as you get the results you want. I literally have no idea what the moral difference is between the United States of America, the USSR, Maoist China, or, or fucking Nazi Germany. I literally would not know the moral difference. Yes. It's the, it's the same thing. It's a templated, it's a templated, uh, it's a template for fascism, essentially is what it is. If it continues to go down that road, and that's where we were headed. You okay, know, so it's, it's it's evident. I, I kind of want to hop in off of Connor. He's real charismatic, but I feel like I have some points to say. So the problem comes is whether we can reliably uh, kind of rely on the information, right? Is even like in the CIA, like they're saying, hey, we don't know what the fuck we're doing. And the motivated reason, right? It's the whole we want to do a thing, like what Connor was saying, is we want to invade. We have reasons to invade, right? It's prosperity and... P, uh, and, uh, peace and prosperity, national security, economic interest. Like, those are the two things every nation does. And so, basically, what we were wanting to do is kind of, like, set up a staging place. Like, basically say, hey, we kind of want to influence more policies. We're kind of like, we don't want Russians here. We don't want fucking Chinese here. So, we're basically trying to set this up. And the process is, though, if we are trying to ensure an effective relationship between us and other, when you basically subjugate the region do a bunch of violence against innocent civilians, you're going to worsen the relationships here. And let me ask you specifically, GSU. So here's an analogy. So basically, um, say in the middle of fucking, I don't know, in the middle of uh, Boston, right? We have in the, the middle of having sex? Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, no. No, in Boston, <laughs> Boston, right? And you have a dude who, um, who blends in perfectly and he's able to get away with fucking bombing it just like last time, right? And basically, if that person comes in there... Do you think it's appropriate to come in and sh basically uh, drive people out of their homes, bomb their own places, and shoot up the places in order to get towards that one singular person? Do you think that is a reliable method of employing? Wait, you're talking about using force on American soil now. These things are way different. Of course not. So what's, course what's the real difference when we have international law, though? Wait, no, what's the I've... difference between dropping bombs... In a foreign nation versus our own, there's a gigantic difference. Maybe you don't recognize it, but I do. So let me ask well, you a question: dying, Do you do you uh, think every human no, was, is equal? Do you ask? Do you think every human no. is equal? I wasn't no, asking you. Uh, do Americans are like at least four you know, or five what, different other yeah. humans. So I don't. I don't <laughs> in terms of value this, and waiting, I don't. For sure. so, 
uh, being honest, I don't really lie. Yes, I value I value Americans more than other people for sure, and that and that has a play in some of my feelings on situations like this. I won't lie at all for sure. But, like, absolutely, my safety is paramount, right? So wait, 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 wait. wait. Like, reality. let me ask you a question. And in the terms of you, who you are, right? You can, are concerned about your own safety. Do you think everybody else is also concerned about their own safety? So you would say yeah, we are relatively right. equal and we want to be safe and free and whatever, right? We all generally want that. Yeah, but our safety is worth yeah. more than the safety of others. Yeah. Why? Why? Yeah. Why specifically is our safety worth more than anybody else's? Because of governmental our, responsibility. Our tribe, our tribe is better than their tribe. Group bias. Let's just let's just single it out to tribalism. Uh, bias. Yeah. No, it's because it's, it's a, the pieces of dirt that we have are not the pieces of dirt that they have. Although yeah, we can, like to they make their it, pieces of dirt. Like, can I? Can, that's like really um, uh, well, simplistic. I mean, I can break it down a little a little further. I guess. Really? That was simplistic. You start, How dare you? Start, you? You started. You started. So, so so this is how it works from here. So I start with myself. Yes, I'm an egoist. I know how you start from. Um, and then I kind of extend from there. People that I care about, my family, people that I love, yada, yada. And then my neighborhood, my community, my city, blah, blah, blah. And this kind of extends out to the nation. The nation is a thing that exists that's protecting all these things that I care about. Right? So, yeah, if, if uh, I don't know those other nations, I don't know the people, I don't know those neighbors and, and their families. I know mine, and that's what I care about. Right? So if I need to fuck them over a little bit to protect myself, to, to better, better the lives of myself and my family and my people, then I'm going to do it. So okay, but there's. I can I address this in not a stupid way? Do you understand way? that when you do that, I just you want to stabilize other question. nations and make it harder for yourself and your family to succeed because it puts us in not a state of for war sure. and, yeah, and combat well, and policing always, actions and everything that we've we, been we in don't for disagree. freaking ever. We don't disagree. He, he, when we're at me. war with other nations, huh. that decreases our security in some way. But worry, I just want to ask you one small thing. Okay. Okay. You are in a. It's almost a trolley car, but not it's a forever. You're in an unfortunate situation where you have to choose who's going to die. And it's going to either be whoever the closest human being you have on this planet or someone you don't know. Mm -hmm. What do you do? Do you say I, um, it's impossible? If it's just one-to-one? One? I murder that person that I don't know. What the wait, fuck? Wait, 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 wait. This, this, this is a bad argument. What you would say is two, three, four people. You basically try to increase the number of people. No, 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 no one-to-one, one, 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 it doesn't matter there because they're both equally human. No, so no, I, I just need you to ask Okay, well, one about one to two. Know. One to two? No, 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 your closest wait, wait, wait. friend or family no, member is worth, like, like, some random that you don't no, wait, know. Hold on, yeah, wait, 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 wait. The, the, the problem is with this can't... analogy is personal yeah. value versus inherent value. Every human, to me, is inherently equal, regardless if they're American or not. So basically, it, you're the whole self-interest, right? Everybody's interested in pursuing their own lives. And when a person is being completely innocent, and then they're invaded by another group... I get all of that. I just want you to answer my question. I get all of that. Everything you just said. If it's like, yeah, if it's like, okay. what Wordy, so what once, Wordy's so really so saying? If, no, 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 no. Let's let's let Wordy say what he's saying, right? You have three options. There's a, you are gonna choose who dies or somebody random is gonna okay. die. There's only two people. There's whoever the person you're closest with, or there's a random other person that you don't know at all. I if it's one to one, I would choose my own family member or friend. To die or to not die. To not die. Right. Okay. So can I can I address this in not a stupid way? Because basically, I, I think that the um, all right. So from an administrative level, the reason why I prioritize Americans over uh, foreign nationals or whatever is because there's a certain element of control. We have national administration. We have local administration. We have communitarian administration. We can we can handle what's here. We can't like like so for instance like uh, uh, Libya is a failed state. Okay. Um, it would cost billions, maybe trillions of dollars to nation build Libya under like some kind of neo-colonial American fucking project. We don't have fucking time or energy for that shit. But if there's a terrorist organization in Libya that's doing suicide bam bombings, attacking the West Coast or uh, attack attacking Americans or whatever, then fuck them. Kill them. That, like, we don't have time to nation build all of Libya into a communist utopia, all right? That, that's the nationalism. The, the reason why, though, I object to uh, GSU a little bit and Doobie a little bit is because what happens, because we're, we're geographically isolated in the Americas, we don't have to deal with Eurasia at all, is that basically people in foreign countries can kind of take on this element like they're from fucking Narnia or like Lord of the Rings or some shit. Like it's some other fucking country that doesn't even exist. And so as a result... Um, you know, like I'm on conversations about terrorism all the fucking time and we basically shitpost about it. We talk about like robot dogs, machine gunning people to death. We talk about fucking, you know, sword bombs, cutting people's heads off and all that kind of shit. 
And while there's a certain element of my fucking 10 year old uh, war fucking playing with GI Joe self that thinks all that shit is badass, I think we also need to concede that these are real fucking human beings that are being blown the fuck up and shot the fuck up. And despite being from different cultures, they're fucking human. And, and that's where like that nationalist shit can jump the shark for me where you're like, oh, well, we can just, you know, fucking glass Afghanistan um, because it's not even a real place to me, the person who's lived in the continental United States my entire life. And that's my fucking beef. Yeah, well, I don't think anybody here would agree to glassing another country just to make our, our well, lives a little Then why did we I, do I've it? I've talked to Samantha Banana. I've talked to Samantha I, I don't Banana. Think so. I don't think wait, so. wait, why wouldn't we <laughs> agree really, to really? glassing an entire country? Well, that's basically what we did. Yeah. Because I, they're, they're, I don't think that's, that's, what that's, we did. Not true. that's definitely not what we're we really did. Are you talking about Japan or Afghanistan? I, I, I would say like killing 1.2 million people and then doing a lot of bombings and killing a lot of innocent people and destabilizing the entire economic region is pretty fucking close, I would say, if that's not the outright class. Sure, but I'm saying is we killed a significant amount of people there. It's innocence war. yeah congratulations it's war maybe we should try to avoid war if it's not going to be productive we Where do you, okay but there's there, there's okay there's a moral problem contractors a ton of money what this, do you mean no cool. no 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 god damn it this this is part of my frustration with like dealing with lefties because uh, uh fuck like so there is a moral difference between the United States military walking into Iraq, lining up fucking civilians and executing them on the fucking street versus going in there, destabilizing, destabilizing the government, trying to take part in debathification, and then having Sunni and Shia militias play who can kill the most civilians today. There is a fucking moral okay, difference. Okay, I, I will say I'm being too hyperbolic. I will give you that. I'm sorry. Okay. But I will Just say is... In. Yeah, I will say is You're that winning, the amount Thanks. of violence and and invasions and policies we were enacting there and the barriers we're putting up for Afghanistans to get out of there through the SIV programs, the problem really comes is it was not productive. It did not do anything we really want until a couple years into the future. Like, basically, the amount of effort we commit to this to just, like, resolve this, I would pretty much prefer the foreign internal defense policies Connor's always advocating for than this. And the problem comes is war as itself doesn't really solve what we want. If we want a nation build, constantly invading areas and constantly bombing areas makes it harder to set up a nation too. But can I, I just want to point this out, I know I'm talking a lot, but basically like, um, there were pro multiple pro-democracy protests in Kabul after the Americans left, which like, Holy fucking shit. Like, that's insane. Yeah. Like, literally literally, women in fucking uh, hijabs walking down the street saying, no, we still want to work. We still want education. Under the threat of death, we want these things. Um, same thing. And there was even some men who also participated in pro-democracy protests. So wow. what, what I would say is that... Um, I, I am completely as black as everybody else. Like, I'm absolutely terrified of what Afghanistan is going to be in the next 10 to 20 years. Um, but there might be some seeds of hope here where, like, the Turkmen, the Tajiks, the Uzbeks, the, the Hazaras and all that kind of stuff, because they know what another regime can look like and the Taliban know that they can't just rule with an iron fist the way that they used to, um, this could have changes, but they might be decades in the making. Um, and, and that's kind of where, like, I just want to, like, gray pill white people, a few people, that there's at least a few hundred, maybe a few thousand um, Afghans who are like, hey, on pain of death, I will protest for my right to live a better standard of living, which is, uh, to, they got more balls than me, I fucking tell you that. Yeah, yeah. And, and they'll because be so because, you know, the, the, the Taliban agree with us that not all people are worth the same, right? They, they're going to see these people protesting for the democracy and their women's rights and shit, they're going to kill them. Right? This, it's already started We'll happening. see. They, they've, they've, okay. they've, well, there are videos of them shooting yeah. uh, artists and shit over <laughs> And journalists, right? Like, it's, well, it's we will see. Okay, yeah, so, that, yeah I mean, basically, basically you also have to talk, when you're talking about the protest, you also have to talk about the fact that there's also a video of the Taliban, like, shooting AK-47s into protesters and stuff like that, or up in the air to try to disperse crowds and things yeah. like that. Um, I, I just have to ask, because, God, I like, uh, like, overall, your your general stance on, like, the this policing style of the military. What, would, would you consider, like, what we're doing, or what we, like, nine months ago in in afghanistan three thousand troops there for support roles and air support or what we're doing in syria right now would you consider that like part of like what you're what you would consider like policing uh, as the military 
Yeah, potentially. So Wordy and I have uh, talked about this in the in the past. I literally advocate for this every panel I'm on where I talk about uh, American geopolitics. It, it's a concept called foreign internal defense. Uh, Marines do it. Uh, American special forces do it. And it's basically where you have a few dozen guys. They train local uh, forces in order to be able to carry out their own security operations. You provide them uh, close air support. And another historical example that I bring up is the Flying Tigers in China. Uh, these were volunteer Western pilots with uh, Western logistics that were able to uh, provide close air support for the Chinese army while they were being invaded by the Japanese. This would not be expensive. It would be 80 to 90% less expensive than the way the war on terror was run. Um, and then on top of that, you would have uh, part, part of the problem with the invasion and then build up model is that it's completely reliant on American power in order to exist. Whereas the four internal defense model where you're training security forces in order to be able to stand on their own feet and then you're providing them air support, if they're not able to win their own battles, if they don't have um, the ability to maintain political power within their own country, they never seize power in the first place. So that's kind of where, uh, and then on top of that, it's way more voluntary. Um, these, there would need to be people in the country or even governments, even billing governments who literally sign up and say, hey, United States, I have a security issue. I have Islamic jihadists here. I need assistance. Can you please come train my guys in order to deal with this problem? And also, uh, you know, either train or consult or logistically support my air force, because let's face it, in the modern era, uh, air power pretty much trumps all. So so that that's kind of my thing is like... Um, we do this like crazy conventional, crazy expensive military apparatus where we can literally do the same thing probably for fucking 10 or 20 cents on the dollar and still be developing new technologies and still uh, build like uh, unilateral and bilateral and trilateral alliances. Um, so for me, there's no real losers here. Um, even the military industrial complex would do fine because they would still be responsible for doing R&D and developing new technology. So... Uh, you know, I'm always looking for the win, 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 win. And uh, so the, me, the frustration so. for me, though, Connor, <laughs> is like we've had this conversation before and like the whole concept, right? It, looking through the Taliban is like we we kind of did that. Not to not uh, more than probably what you're proposing. But the problem comes mm. is like we kind of like we had that ba that conflict between the two two uh, competing groups of like the, the Sunni and the Shia or whatever. And after they took down the major person in power, they're like in conflict. Like they no longer have anybody to fight. And then from there, we're like, hey, uh, Afg uh, the Soviets are coming in. And we're like, well, we got to support the Taliban now. And they took over power. And we see the consequence of that happening today. And for me, the problem really comes is the reasoning the motivations behind the people who make these policy decisions is they aren't reliable. We can't trust them. And really, like, I know they're going to be, they're going to, going to have power. They're going to make these decisions anyways. But I would really want to reform intelligence operations. This way we can kind of more effectively gauge information on the ground. And two is, like, try to remove that personal bias from policymakers. And I think trying to at least, like, actively push against them. Like, hey, if you're going to do this, do this and that. Like, that's the real problem is they have this authority and they just get to really make these decisions unchecked. But, but this is, this is my problem with the worldview It is basically like, um, it, 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 uh, it demands angels uh, of human beings and we just don't have them. All we have is human beings. So we, we kind of have to be realistic about the power games that we play. And this is one of the things that like, um, uh, so there's like American exceptionalism where America is the best thing since fucking sliced bread. Um, everybody else can suck a dick and like all that kind of shit. Well, there's kind of the inverse of American exceptionalism uh, on the lefty side where we can do no good ever. Um, and on top of that, all of the world's problems are our fault. And I think that's like a really kind of naive way to look at the world. So for instance, Afghanistan, we supported the Mujahideen. We gave them a few million dollars. We gave them Stinger missiles in order to blow up fucking Russian helicopters and all that kind of shit. Um, and then out of the civil war that ensued, uh, I'll wrap up in a second, Prime. Um, the Out of the civil war that ensued, the Taliban emerged. Well, during that civil war, there were three ge geopolitical uh, players that I remember, and they were Pakistan, Iran, and Oman. So the second that we backed out, they all backed uh, militias that basically caused a civil war that created the Taliban. So, so realistically, what I'm saying is, how have we forced to back him? Oh, and man. Have to oh, no. Trust not again. With, uh, um, as soon as he talks about the CIA guys. and their actions, oh, yeah. boy. <laughs> oh. I try... I uh, try it again, uh, Connor. Connor is ex-military and an ex-cop. They really might oh be messing with what he's about to say. 
Oh man. Oh man. You ever heard of Bob Lazar, yeah. folks? Uh, they canceled him too. I'm glad uh, I don't have the ex cop thing. Kind of, kind of. Give it a try, then we'll go to uh, Doobie. Yeah. So uh, ba basically, what I was saying is that power abhors a vacuum. Um, and America is not the only player, and I think it's naive to think that we're the only player. Yeah, so that, but, uh, that's really uh, the, that's if, really I, if, if I if I could. <sighs> Doobie, no, okay. no, no. Uh, Doobie and Pam, do you have your hand up? All right. Um, yeah, Connor, if you go on like that again, I'll pull the switch again. Like, you gotta be more concise. <laughs> so, <laughs> what, what I'm wondering is like, so I said, I, I don't mean I do mean to pull the conversation back a little bit, but I asked a conversation earlier about um, no, I asked a conversation, I asked a question earlier about. Uh, using a crisis to achieve some political end and it seems like you guys are against it but i was listening there's a lot of moralizing happening a lot of rambling but i don't think we got any good reasons not to do this in fact this is something that uh, happens even in like uh, national politics in the united states now there's a school shooting i've oh, got 20 kids died we need to restrict gun uh, gun gun rights uh, you know, there, there's there's a pandemic. Oh God, we need to restrict personal liberties now. We need to require people to wear a mask or whatever, or we need to have uh, you need to have a passport to out of the to to uh, go to school or to go into a government building. You need to have like a vaccine, uh, um, uh, fucking pass, whatever, right? So like, I feel like this is something that happens all the time. I don't think it's usually a problem for for lefties or even people on the right. And when some some uh, tragedy happens that, that they can use toward, toward their political ends, so I'm wondering why this is any different. Now, oh yeah. That, you can say that it's because, you know, oh god, we're go we're going to war, right? But, I mean, yeah, people are gonna die. You um, could. But you but could. if but if at the end of the day, you can make the case and and you can do the work to make sure that we're better off, and maybe people on the other side of the world are better off and hate us a little less. After going to that go through going through that war and going through that process. Why not do it? Like, why is that an issue? Okay, so, so... Wait, dude, pants. Nah, just gonna, Mr. Frog, Mr. Frog, I don't think that wanting to have people wear masks and get vaccinated during the middle of a pandemic is the same thing as... Uh, as it, this is almost, this is worse, actually, than my analogy earlier about what if you found your significant other in bed with somebody else. I'm just going to throw that out there. Well, okay, I think so we have to disqualify me... this. I, I disagree, right but I get, I disagree, but I give an easier one, right? So one thing that uh, lefties have been doing um, is that because of the pandemic and because of the way that people are suffering during the pandemic, hey, it's time for UBI, it's time for, for universal health care, right? Okay. And this, this, yeah, okay. So you agree with that? You're using yeah, this thanks. crisis where hundreds of thousands of people have died. It's like, hey, let's use this to further our political ends. Right? Yes. So, so, I, so, so uh, why, why shouldn't we do that? Right? So for me, okay, do we hire a Employment. So, to be clear, I'm a lefty and I'm not so, for UBI. <laughs> I think so, the problem um, is when you create the crisis. I think that's go, the problem. Let's go yeah. on a pan. So I, I just wanted to say, Connor, that it's, the reason that we seem to be, not be able to do any good in the rest of the world isn't because of some self-hating, like, oh, America sucks, we're the worst. It's because, as you said, the Middle East is fucking Narnia to us. The people here, we don't really give a shit. The people, like, if we compare, like, how interested we are in Afghanistan to how interested the Taliban are in Afghanistan, guess what? The Taliban is more interested in Afghanistan. So the reason that, uh, the reason that, you know, there's this thing where, oh, we don't seem to be able to do any good in the world isn't, you know, I don't think that's just self-hating lefties, and I say this as a very right-leaning person. I think the reason is because we don't understand what's going on there domestically. And we don't care enough to find out what's going on there domestically. So I, I just wanted to respond to that. Well, it, it doesn't matter so far as it affects until it affects us, right? So, so if they were oppressing women and selling children into slavery, whatever the fuck they're doing, but they didn't attack us, and if we wanted something from them, they, they gave it to us, and we, we wouldn't give a fuck. I think, right? They're putting in place in war where this is the case. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I don't, I don't think, uh, I, I really don't think that's the issue. It, it seems like, yeah. They're more interested in what's going on there. We're not really interested until it kind of, you know, comes into our lawn, basically. Yeah. Well, so, in, in that. I, sorry, Wordy. Go ahead. Okay. So I was just wanting to say specifically, uh, Connor, is I'm I'm going to be hypercritical of my nation, right? I live here. I I see all the things we've done, and I'm going to be hypercritical. And I can admit we've done good things, right? We, uh, you know, better women's rights in Afghanistan. And the real problem comes though is like. Even if we, when we do leave, other nations are going to try to fill the power vacuum. I would say is if we're going to have power and if we're going to leverage our influence, I personally would like more accountability kind of outside the centralized power system, right? If the president is going to make actions, I would like more accountability outside of the 
political body kind of just be able to like critique and deal with it and that's the issue for me more than anything mm. is that these actions are taking taken and they're just kind of done and there's really no measurable way to understand like what they're doing their motivations and kind of all these different factors that apply there's um there, there's a roman concept called apotheosis it's basically like when the when caesar dies he becomes a god and throughout all of history no matter how shitty caesar was um no caesar ever denied another caesar apotheosis when he died and the reason why i'm bringing this up is because power in this system does not check itself because it knows when it's its turn at bat whatever uh, institutional reforms are put in place in order to check that power will be used against that as well so so what i'm saying is when it comes to like holding donald rumsfeld accountable as a war criminal or george bush uh, accountable as a war criminal the reason why obama basically ignored the fucking cia torture documents and ignored uh, prosecuting uh, george w bush or donald rumsfeld is because he was going to do drone strikes fucking within six months and he didn't want to be caught up in the same fucking legal bullshit that he set up in order to ensnare the power that had preceded him yeah um, but that's so that the, that's the real issue in terms of the political body instead of like creating all uh like third party but, systems that's but i don't but i don't think there's any examples in the history of what you're looking for wait 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 yeah. so so the problem comes is there are two options we could either try to institute more reforms or whatever or we just let them keep fucking doing this do you think we should just let them do this keep doing it is that what you think oh hot take I wonder what, what's the hot take as long as they stay a world superpower and we don't have to worry about people showing up on our soil, it's sad, but I don't care. Like, it's really bad. Like, it's really, really bad. <laughs> like, the government has done terrible things to black people, right? So I'm not like this, yay, hey, the government is, is all virtuous. But, like, at the end of the day, as long as I don't feel national security is threatened and they're not doing things that are just obviously bad, if they're using, like, an attack on America to, to respond and they respond somewhat more drastically i'm i'm fine well, with it well when every okay, nation well, well, actually well, I, just kind of just kind of back I, up what you're saying I, I or like to um reinforce what you're saying i think that people tend to get caught up on like the moral issues when we're talking about this stuff and i, I think the reality is we, we should kind of disregard that um when it's <laughs> necessary to achieve you know what's best for us right what's best for the country if that no means, if, if the that, time for concentration that, camps if that means that we don't wait listen if that means that we don't send soldiers into Nigeria to save those 200 little girls that were uh, swept up by, by Boko Haram or whatever, hey, that's what that means, right? If that means that we are okay with Saudi Arabia having basically slaves while we're doing business with them, but it benefits us to do business with them, hey, that's what we do. Right? I think at the end of the day, I, this this kind of moral grandizing is kind of silly. Can I... Can I the same we can never call ourselves the greatest oh, well, country in the world, and we should never call ourselves moral, morally stupid. superior, and we should be open about that fact. Because Wait, that on, we are morally superior. Anyway, Wait, morally superior. No, it's because we don't have infinite resources. There's going to be bad actors, there's going to be bad people, there's going to be bad things that happen. We can't be, we've tried to be the global police, and what's happened is we've ignored people at home that have issues, right? So, like, I, I don't think these things are feasible. If I thought that was a pathway where we could be this super like we almost have to just be what y'all are advocating for is more like nationalistic and, and it's total and like domination colonial. Of the yeah, yeah it's more colonial than what like uh, you think i i, I never like, i never advocated for nationalism dude wait 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 yeah, but, but, well, why not how do, how do we how do we how do we save those poor little girls in afghanistan who are going to yeah, be exactly. okay like, being in torture for wanting to go what? to school without totally dominating so the country. it's it's real like easy is you devise systems where you can briefly enter in without having to like fucking coming fuck up an entire what region. What those countries don't want you to? Yeah, th that okay. Doing that in Afghanistan would require a massive cultural shift. It's like you just don't kill people. The, the people that replace them will also not want little girls to go to school. Right? So like. Yeah, that's why we, I don't know. We kind of we were trying to channel a bunch of uh, well, refugees well, out of there. Give them a way let's out. Go, uh, let's go, go refugees. Yeah. I feel like there's kind of an inconsistency here on um, uh, Doobie and Gambits. On one hand, we're supposed to be super uh, Machiavellian and, and calculating, but on the other hand, oh, it's okay to go to war uh, in Afghanistan, even though a lot more of our soldiers are going to die in 9-11 because, you know, our emotions, our emotions matter. You know, it's okay to do a disproportionate national response security, because that's what no, we want. No, no that's, that's not national security. We, 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 we need to die, finish, 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 right? Finish. Like, yeah, we had 10, um, I think 10,000 soldiers die, right? That's three times as many as died in 9-11. 
and the world isn't any more safe. So if we want to be this Machiavellian calculating superpower, well, shouldn't we, you know, do a solution, like not go to war or do some sort of like, I don't know, just do something small to quell oh, America's no. appetite? So, so have you ever seen um, a Red Ender's Game? Yes. I watched the movie, yes. yeah. Okay, so one of my favorite scenes in that movie, right, is when there's a bully hit picking on him. Spoilers, everyone. There's a bully picking on Ender, right? He hits the bully, and when the bully's on the floor, he breaks his leg, right? And and when he's asked why he did this, right, he says, well, the, the, the punch was to stop the fight. Breaking his leg was intended to, to stop all future fights, right? So... I think you could do something similar in, in, in Afghanistan. I, that's well, at the start of this. I don't know if you remember. I said that. I think the initial response going to war was the correct response. The incorrect response um, after that was how we handled the the uh, occupation, right? Trying to make sure that they had some control. Trying to make sure that like, if they if they felt like they had to say anything, it's not fuck that. We should have totally dominated the country, uh, colonized the country, and then. Um, you know, and uh, then uh, West, wait, wait, Western, wait. westernize wait. all the westernize every institution they had, and and over time, this would have been a long, very long term project. You had a, had a cultural shift that you need to make sure that those little girls and those gay people aren't being oppressed in that country. Wait, if I can respond I'm off right, that, right. Hey, everybody else, everybody else, I read the book. And, and I, I, I no, wait, wait, doobie, doobie, no, you're not okay. No, wait, wait, no, really, wait, wait, no. sorry, one, one more sentence, I promise. Just more, more importantly than that, they're making sure they aren't oppressed. That makes sure that there's not the atmosphere there and the culture there that, that would uh, lead to them wanting to bomb the United States and seeing the United States as like the great devil or whatever the fuck and whatever. It, it would lead to us having more control in this place so we don't need to fuck with them as much. The, the culture looks a lot uh, closer to ours. So long term, future battles are avoided. Hello, so, uh, science fiction so. nerdy. Oh, no, no, everybody else, shut up. So, science fiction nerdy, Ender's Game, literally makes the exact opposite point you're trying to assert. The dude came in and permanently crippled that dude, and then basically that analogy was comparing to him fucking invade, taking over and killing an entire species. So the real problem comes here is your analogy doesn't stand up because the book makes the exact opposite point. He eliminated an entire species that was seen as a threat whenever they hadn't been invading, they had been doing all these things for decades at this point. So the real problem comes is appropriate response. You can stop a threat, but if you, um, if you come in and permanently ruin a region or permanently um, destabilize a region, you know what's going to happen is you're going to sow sentiment and violence against you, you're going to create more terrorism. In this instance, if we're invading these areas, you know what's going to happen? Every other country's going to hate us, and then when China invades us, everybody's like, fuck you, America. That's literally what's going to happen. Uh, uh, I mean, God damn I it. I don't think that, like, okay, so like, this whole thing about us going in there and being able to assert this power upon a people who, when we tried to give them the power, like, with the, like, I, I just don't think that that's fully well thought of. Like, how many troops are we trying to send in? 200, 300,000? How many trillions of dollars would we have spent on that? Five, ten? I mean, like, I, I don't know where that stops. And then, hey, what, hey, hold on. Why not, I mean, Afghanistan's bad, yeah, but Hold on, there's other countries that are doing similar shit as well. Do we invade them after? Yeah, so so my it seems my like a, but then also we don't care about them. Yeah, we my only care about Americans. Yeah, Captain Very Captain A. Weird. Jones Captain A. Jones, I, I kinda wanna address this because weirdly enough, like I, I agree with Doobie from a descriptive perspective. I just don't think it's something we should do. Um, so what what I agree with him on is that um, so we we've only had uh, between ten and fifteen thousand troops in Afghanistan for the past like fifteen to twenty years. As a matter of fact, like I think the average troop count was like twelve thousand or something like that. That's not a lot of troops. Um, we were spending about fifty billion dollars a year. I think it's like point zero three percent of the budget. This is something that we could have done in perpetuity. I don't want to do it in perpetuity because uh, basically you know fifty billion dollars might not be a lot to Uncle Sam, but it's a lot of money to me. Um, and, and basically, what I would say is that. Doobie is right that this would be like a 100 year project. We've done the same thing in Japan. We've done the same thing in Germany. Like, like we, we've done the same thing. You could have a Marshall plan for Afghanistan. But to your point, what you've said is um, there are cultural differences, there's regional differences. And if we're claiming some kind of moral right to, to monopolize a culture and colonialize it and make them just, you know, uh, like America town um, in Central Asia. There's a whole fuckload of places that are doing just as nefarious shit on a day-to-day -day basis. Why are they not on our radar? Um, and then to GSU's point, he basically said that, like, 
logistics and efforts are not limitless. And it seems like the appetite for war in the appetite for nation building is limitless, but, but, but like the, uh, but only as long as somebody else is doing it, you know, like, like, like as long, as long as you're not the person going to Afghanistan, as long as you're not the person going to Iraq, um, then it doesn't really matter. So, so that, that's kind of where I think that, um, the reason why I talk about dialing in the war on terror to be a police action, counterterrorism, working in conjunction with other countries, developing foreign internal defense, still developing technology, but not invading with hundreds of thousands of troops. Um, Iraq, we had like 250,000 Afghanistan. I think we had like 50,000 and scaled it down to 10. Um, the reason why I advocate for these things is because the lesson we should learn is that one, we didn't achieve our goals. Two, we risked the lives of hundreds of thousands of people. Two, or three, we directly or indirectly killed a few hundred thousand people. And four, we spent like, I think between like two and four trillion dollars for basically nothing. Um, Iraq is now a proxy state of Iran, uh, of Iran. And Afghanistan is now back in the hands of the Taliban. We haven't really changed that much for a lot of blood and a lot of treasure. Don't forget China. I, I think that's like the, yeah, the existential threat of China, worse. the existential threat of China is making I, us real concern, you know? I, you I don't say things have gotten worse because instead of Iraq being able to be this, uh, albeit very pesky uh, pr uh, thing, uh, like a nation on the world stage, instead they're now like basically next, right next to being a failed state. I, okay, I, I don't want to necessarily go that far because, for instance, like I want to say, like Afghanistan's like GDP or whatever has increased like either ten or twenty times since the United States invasion. Um, so basically, like there actually has been a pretty heavy development of the domestic economy. I just don't know how much of that is going to survive Taliban governance and whether or not the Taliban. So, for instance, like uh, Doobie and other people were talking talking about like the reprisal killings over the past couple of months. Um, I don't know if the Uzbeks, Tajiks and Hazaras are going to be able to actually use their power in order to negotiate an actual representative government or if the Taliban, it, it's just going to be fucked. And, and I, I really, we have to wait like 10 or 20 years to figure that answer out. You know, just to nitpick the 10 X, just to nitpick really quick, that 10 X thing that you just I, said, 10 X can look like a lot, but when you have something that's really small and then you 10 X it, it's still really small. So like, no, no one cares. Okay, fuck you. But, you know what? Fuck you, frog. Wait, right. it does you matter. It, it, you fascist frog. Over the, over the last, can, I answer, can I answer Connor's question? So you asked me where it stops, right? So like, if we keep doing, if we, you know, colonize these places, there are a lot of other countries that, that could be like argued that should be colonized. I think um, when it, so long as a country is not affecting us in a negative way, is it standing in the way of our interests, leave them alone. Uh, I think actually. Uh, First on the chopping block for me would be Mexico, obviously. Um, <laughs> then, then beyond that, right? They, they, you know, something comes up and we find it'd be profitable or uh, uh, long term would suit our interests to, you know, invade Nigeria or something. Then hey, that's what we got to do. Hey, have you uh, have Are you, you heard of my doctrine to destabilize Latin America? We've been doing that forever. <laughs> yeah, but that's not the same as uh, building it up. Have you heard my uh, invade down to the Panama Canal plan, Doobie? Are you a fan? I haven't heard it, but that's something yeah. I've actually. Doobie, I do want to make a critique though. I want to make. <laughs> I, I want to try and make a critique. Okay, Mexico, Mexico has a lot of fucking natural resources. Okay. There's, no, there's no reason. To Doobie, so I do want to make a critique. Yeah. The problem that comes with in terms of colonialism is like when you look at Pax Britannica, right? Is a Britain invaded all these other countries like India, and it all these through these process of building these economic relationships with like imperial power, right? You take a lot of resources out, and you kind of sow national tension. And this is a reality. Catastrophe will happen to where a nation can no longer command the same amount of power that it once did. So in the process, as a nation lose falters, loses its influence or whatever, you know what happens to colonial nations? They say, fuck you, and they end the relationship. And then from there, permanently, that nation is p permanently hindered because of the problems that it had set itself up for. So building your economy around this in colonial uh, colonial intent isn't really productive because well, in the I, end I, I, you I may get just... a you get made like a comparatively short-term benefit, but you're gonna have a sig significant long-term negative externality. No, so long term my, my plan will be to totally annex Mexico, right? Um, invade military help, help them take out the cartels and then make them part of the United States. 
Because I because I love Mexicans Help them so much. take so out the cartels. I, the, I, the, unlike you guys. The unlike cartels. you guys. What are you well, talking okay, about? Bro, Captain you just Jones, fucking Captain legalized Jones? the war. If no, we no, just no, made drugs yeah, legal, yeah, that yeah, would yeah, fuck. Yeah, boom. Cartels no, gone. Yeah, no yeah, cartels yeah, gone. You, you specifically are, you are the one killing the cartels by giving them their your money to buy fucking drugs and then funds the cartels. First of all, I get my weed from fucking California grown organic. All right? So don't even know you don't only do weed. You see what you did, Prime? You see what you've done. I haven't done drugs in a long time, I'm don't don't, don't talk try, about don't the cartel even bring it up. Okay. Shut up. Do you know any? You said right, depressed okay, about that. Of, uh... For as long as we keep know. illegal immigrants. Uh, I don't fund the cartel. Okay. I only fund my local drug dealers. Um. So, uh, well, thanks for that. Uh, we're going to go on to our next topic. If you are just finding this channel, if you're enjoying this uh, conversation, hit that follow button. Right now, Mission Notifications are on since I do this six nights a week. Don't want you to miss out. I'm with that follow button. Right now, Mission Notifications are on so you know going live. Uh, uh, Xmash for social and chat uh, to follow us on social media. Uh, jump into our uh, Twitter and uh, follow us there. Uh, jump to our uh, Discord where we have all these conversations. They all happen um, on our Discord. Once you to be a part of that. Um, and then go to our YouTube where you'll find the VODs. Um, the VODs are there or not here. Um, so uh, if you want to see something from the past, or uh, you missed any of this, go to our YouTube um, and a like, comment, and subscribe. All right. So moving on to our next topic. The Biden administration has decided to support local school districts who are defying state bans on mask mandate. Biden will be providing funding directly to the schools, though that funding has been denied by governors. Do you support this move? Should we be celebrating the federal government undermining local control during a health crisis? Uh, what if Trump was in office and he was providing funds to schools that refused a mask mandate? Mm. So yeah, uh, once I take a look at this, it seems like people on the left are, all right, cheering these actions. That's uh, Biden's helping uh, these schools getting around these bans. Um, but you know, uh, should we? I mean, should, should that be the case? Should we be more concerned about local control? And, yeah, what if the shoe is on the other foot? All right, so uh, we'll uh, get started uh, with instructions. Captain A. Jones. Thank you, thank you. Yes, big lefty. Yeah, I do definitely applaud the Biden administration for their newest actions uh, against the pandemic that is raging across the world. Um, those are important caveats because like ingrained in this question is this like this uh well what if it was the other side argument the other side doesn't have a good argument okay being against masks and being against vaccines just makes you anti-science it just makes you i like I, i've been seeing on twitter what would the uh, founding fathers have done i don't think the founding fathers would be against masks and vaccines that's what i don't think um i i would find it hard pressed to to think that uh that hamilton would have written that uh that masks are 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 taking away my freedoms uh because of a global pandemic if he had known that masks were and vaccines were the number one thing that stopped this thing so like that's just dumb on its face so yeah go biden uh Wordy. uh yeah um it's hard right it is basically i'm an anarchist i hate the state but i hate covid more in this instance basically there's a concept of positive and negative freedom. Freedom from and freedom to. In this instance, it's freedom from being sick. It's freedom from a plague. It's freedom from a fucking pandemic. And that instance is, I ideally would like local communities, but unfortunately local communities are so, uh, so dependent on state power. So in this instance, we should try and move towards this. We've been patient, right? We say, hey, the vaccines are free. Go and take them. We say, hey, um, you know, like, hey, you, your, your business should you know, probably do this and be pushing it and be impatient and people st are still refusing to get the vaccine. And you know what happens? More variants develop, more people get sick, more people die. We're having about the same amount of deaths as we are back in 20 January, 2021. So like the problem comes is we've exhausted every other option at this point and we've done everything we can to assert, Hey, do this. It's good for you. And at this point, all other options are exhausted i want to live a life i want to live a normal life i want to go outside without having to wear a mask so what you know you have to do you gotta fucking get the vaccine so we can get rid of 
coronavirus at this point. That's just, that's just how I feel. I'm just so fucking exhausted of these murderers. Yeah, points. Yeah, I'm happy that the uh, so the coronavirus sucks, but I'm happy that the one thing that it's done is it's a uh, black pilled wordy on anarchism. That's uh, that's fucking based. So the fucking. <laughs> In reference to this issue, it's actually not local control. This is um, this is a part of the problem with the narrative. So the uh, I live in the state of Florida. Um, I forget my douchebag of a governor's name, uh, but basically what he said is he will punish by withholding salaries from teachers uh, for school districts that enforce masks uh, in their schools. But what's happening is at an even more local level, these districts are saying that they want to protect their students, and as a result, they're going to enforce masks. So we're not, when we say that the governor is, uh, you know, his rights as somebody to exert local governor gubernatorial control or whatever is being violated, what's being violated even more is the districts to democratically or pseudo-democratically decide what they're going to do in order to protect the health of their students. So uh, this, is a, this is a bullshit talking point um, from Republicans. And if you really had a fucking problem with masks, then you should go talk to your uh, school board, and they're probably going to call you a fucking asshole. Um, so, yeah, that, that's pretty much where I'm at. And what I would say, too, is that uh, I was in the military. I got stabbed with, like, t 20 different diseases that I have no idea. Like, I I'm pretty sure mosquitoes don't like me anymore because I have so much poison inside my body. And what, what I would say is... That's fine. You don't want to get vaccinated. That's fine. But guess what? If you want to go to a fucking public school, your bitch ass is doing fucking virtual learning because you shouldn't be a health risk to uh, students and faculty. Uh, and we'll make accommodations for you. We'll, we'll make accommodations for you, but you don't have a right to necessarily be there in person if you're going to be a risk to everybody else. And I'll leave it there. Truly really false. Uh, yeah, what Connor said, it's, it, not only is it 20 vaccines, it's an assembly launch shots on both sides. You're just walking through <laughs> it. Um, but... Overall, I'm not a big fan of like the federal government coming in and doing this. I have more of an issue with the state coming in and having a problem with it first. So now that the federal government had now now we have the uh, um, a situation where the federal government has to come and step in front of the state from doing something stupid. Overall, fuck COVID. I'm so done with it. We've had we've had the solution for fucking nine months: baths, vaccines, masks, social distancing. Just do that. We're 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 at the second highest case level since the the pandemic we're at the third highest deaths on seven day rolling averages for both since the pandemic started and it's because people are being dumb overall we have solutions it's free it's in your gr local grocery store and for for schools we don't have it we don't have the option for 12 and under to get vaccinated and if you want to go off only fda approved 16 and under to get vaccinated so we still have to do something because these kids are still getting COVID. They're still spreading it to other people. So we still have to prevent the spread somehow or else we're going to be in the same position that we are. So overall, yeah, I, I think Biden has to do this because the states kind of forced his hand. Do you mean? Um, so yeah, I agree. Um, I feel like uh, this is another one of those examples, right? I kind of mentioned this earlier of us not letting a good crisis go to waste. Um, <laughs> I think this is a perfect opportunity right, to have the federal government begin to undermine state and local control of public schools, which is something that uh... needs to happen, which is something that needs to happen if we're ever gonna get to a situation where schools aren't being funded primarily by property taxes in the local area. And you know they're, they're funded at the, the federal level, which I think is, is necessary to face a lot of the schools in this country. So I think it's a good thing. Um, I think we should definitely use this pandemic do you want to undermine state and local control of schools and pass it over to the federal government? Jason. You did, buddy. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. I agree with him. <laughs> so number number one, uh, what Connor Point was, was saying, uh, he kind of hit the nail on the head with a lot of that. Um, I, I totally agree that, you know, it's an infringement on the districts and the municipalities' rights that the governors are stepping in and um, trying to ban man ma ban mask mandates when, in fact, it should be up to the districts to decide. They're the ones closest to the students. They're the ones closest to the families. And absolutely, um, they can judge better what should happen in their communities than, than the states in some of these cases. 
Overall, I think every every school should have a mask mandate. Every school should have a vaccine a vaccination mandate for their teachers and staff uh, and students at you know at appropriate age to do so. Um, this is backed up by 1905 uh, Supreme Court decision about vaccinations. This is further backed up by the fact that Washington himself demanded inoculations for smallpox and did so using military force. So this is nothing new. This is something we should expect. The simple fact that Biden's been nice about his the way he's actually doing this is what's surprising because he could have been a lot more aggressive about it. He's got the standing. There's a there's a Supreme Court precedent for it. So um, kudos to him. Uh, one thing I'll say is I think that people who are shy to get the vaccine are going to be more shy as a result of this. And you will have some pushback and, you know, a certain undercurrent of uh, opposition that's that's going to be really loud and really vocal for a while. Um, so I'd kind of like to see how that's going to play out. Um, Pam? You're muted. Yeah, I think what Connor said was extremely important. Um, we're giving, you know, the local people more control as long as I, I think as long as, you know, schools are funded by local property tax, local schools should be able to decide whether or not to have a mask mandate. If the uh, shoe was on the other foot, so to say, I would still say that I think that, you know, uh, schools in Republican district, or districts that don't want uh, a mask mandate have that right as well. Um, you can't really force populations who don't agree with a lot to go along with it. They'll just not enforce it anyways. So I, I think it's silly to try to force state control on something on an issue that is completely local. Um, so I, I, you know, I'm not a huge fan of, you know, the uh, Biden coming in and funding, uh, you know, funding uh, national funding of local schools. But I will say, this is good. More local control is better. So I support it. Okay. Uh Yes, yeah. Yeah, so on this, um, I'm a big fan of mask mandates. I'm a big fan of social distancing. I'm a big fan of even shoot the shutdown. We cooled off of mask mandates. Absolutely think it's stupid. But um, so in this situation, I kind of agree with almost every, the sentiment everybody's had. I think this should be something controlled at the local level. I, I don't understand people that are against mask mandates. Maybe somebody in chat or somewhere can inform us on this opinion. It's not as invasive as something like a vaccine. So I just don't get it. I don't understand the argument for not wearing a mask during a like, respiratory pandemic. But um, yeah, so I I don't like it at all, like really, but I support what Joe Biden is doing. The other part of what he's trying to do is push all private companies with over 100 employees to force vaccination and be charged like 14,000 per violation. I think that's absolutely stupid. And maybe we'll talk about that too. But um, yeah. Um, I, I do want to say specifically, Connor, it's not that I'm blackpilled on anarchism. I'm blackpilled on people a little bit, but I'm more blackpilled <laughs> on the on the literal state, on the literal government that had an entire president for like a good year a good a year and a half say vaccines cause autism vaccines lead to uh they don't cause death or whatever the covid's a hoax like basically is humans suck but you know what, what sucks worse a person in power that's spreading this conspiracy and doing it basically unchecked that is like basically it's really frustrating is like these people didn't do it on their own they were driven towards this behavior and basically at this point i'm like that fucking sucks and I just, it's just like guys We've done everything we can at this point. We've been so patient. You just want to fucking kill everybody. That's that's just but, my frustration. But, but is this not... So I'm not trying to derail the conversation completely, but at the same time, is this not indicative, because I, I've been bringing this up a lot recently, that politics is... I mean, we even look at the Twitch.tv space. Politics has to be like 80% cults of personality and 20% good ideas. Like, I'm not bullshitting with that. Because basically, like, if you look at that, um, Trump was literally saying... We have Operation Warp Speed. This vaccine is going to be the best. It's going to be the best thing ever. We paid the best. Got him again. God, damn the it. Best internet connection. Dude, I'll we stop doing that. <laughs> damn CIA. Uh, uh, Connor is, is coming at you us live from a cave in Afghanistan. Reporting <laughs> on <laughs> the crisis. Oh, oh, my God. Uh, yeah, he's frozen. Okay, so we'll go oh, I kind of I want to ask the rest of the panel because I feel like a lot of people didn't really answer the question of what uh, they would support if the shoe was on the other foot. Uh, so I just want to ask directly to the other uh, members of the panel 
if Trump was president and states mandated masks and local school districts wanted to go against it, would you uh, still support their local autonomy? If no, if no, no, they would. It doesn't. It doesn't follow the Wait. science. It doesn't follow what's rationally, uh, you know, what's rational in the public health and in the public interest. So okay, so you're, 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 you guys have you guys don't care at all about local control. control. So so in this instance, for me, no, I so so pan. I knew, Pan, here, 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 here's here's my argument, okay? So ideally, I would like local control. But the problem comes is I have a set of ethics I want to pursue. I believe people should have the freedom from um, being sick all the time or being sick with COVID, right? So the problem then comes is if I'm pursuing local control, but then the local locality is like literally fucking like, oh, we're going to basically inject a bunch of ivermectin into our bodies and fucking get everybody else sick. And it's like, huh. And that instance... It's like, well, other localities, can you, like, deal with this? And if they're like, no, we can't because we don't have any real influence on them. And it's like, well, shit, who's in, who's in charge here? Yo, you in charge. Get this shit ready. And that's my emphasis. I would like local control. I would like to maximize local autonomy. However, when local autonomy is leading to real deaths, real consequences, I'm willing to violate my principles to try and maximize my principles in another aspect. Well, your real principle isn't Political local. Views are oh, your real principle. Your real principle is pushing your ideology. It's not local. Control. Everybody's principle is pushing their ideology. What does that mean? No, no, no. I, not mine. No, I'm perfect. Like I, I absolutely hate abortion. I think it's complete murder. But Why are you on this panel it. then? No, I don't. If you're not pushing your principles. Wait, you, uh, can to you talk listen? about it and there's to to discuss things, that, but it doesn't mean that I. Yeah, just because I have an idea and I think that's the best way that society should operate doesn't mean that I think the state should be imbued with the power to ensure that everybody acts in the way that I want. I think that's gross. I think that's... Like, yeah, I don't think I don't think the state should be imbued with this power, but unfortunately they are, so I have to live with the state as it is. Well, okay, so um, it turns out I was running off of Wi-Fi the whole time. I'm on a hard line now, so hopefully that solves some of the issues. I'm going to blame my dog who's sleeping by the internet, uh, <laughs> so it's his fault, not mine. Um, but ba basically what I was going to say is... This is my problem when we talk about like uh, these principles, like states' rights or uh, you know local control or pure democracy or something like that. Well, uh, no offense, but like at least a quarter of the population is dumb as fuck. Like seriously. So, and it doesn't take much to get a bunch of dumb fucking people to agree to a bunch of nefarious bullshit. And this is why I'm a statist is because I think that there have to be people who are in charge who basically come out and they say, hey, listen, we've talked to people. We think this is the right move. We got to make decisions. And then I also believe in like a representative the republic because i think that these uh these powerful factions have to be able to fight these ideas out in the public sphere so we can hold power accountable but th this is what i'm saying with um this issue in particular is that republicans are violating their own stated principles pretending that they're they're trying to get local control but they're not the school districts are saying we want masks because we want to do whatever is possible in order to safeguard our faculty and staff, some of whom are, vac uh, some of whom are vaccinated and some whom of whom are not. And it's, this, it's the governors who are fucking coming out and saying, nope, you're not allowed to impose this on people. So, so literally, they're, they're claiming local, uh, local control, but it's bullshit. It's a veneer. It's rhetoric to forward a fucking agenda. And that's where I feel like the right wing needs to fucking cut through if you actually value local control then you need to call bullshit because it's not local control it's just the guy who lines up with your ideology yes yeah like absolutely yeah agree. i agree oh, i mean yeah. fuck the republican party so yeah, like I, I i don't know if you have to I... pan i have to, i have to, i have to ask you know what you're right you're right i'm sorry i'm sorry republicans are people too i apologize Captain <laughs> Uh, I was going to change the subject, but then I had a point before that that I was going to say. Um, I disagree with Wordy's take on that because I, like, I feel like I'm a pragmatist. And in that vein, though, I'm going to tie it all together. In that vein of being a pragmatist, that's even more like if you're just like a practical person who looks at vaccines like a rational human being. Like, didn't we all get shots like uh, like for nubococcal hepatitis, like tetanus, stuff like that? Like, we all got vaccines for that stuff. Yeah, I don't understand the big hesitancy of a new vaccine during a fucking global pandemic. Well, like that makes sense. It's the it's that. That has twenty years of tech behind it, twenty years of research, right. twenty years of application. It's not a new vaccine, and that's the that's what I think keeps getting mixed up. 
Because people Wait. put that out in the sphere. Oh, this is new. This is brand new. Oh, don't get it. It's scary. It's spooky stuff. It's uh, it's DNA uh, genetic manipulation and shit. It is? That's not what it is, you know? Like, not on the way. You know? You've done a whole bunch of things to make your original false statement sound better, right? The people that believe that this thing is going to modify your DNA, yeah, they're wild and crazy, right? But saying that this isn't new is ridiculous. Y yeah, yeah the like, like, I, I think just, like, it's new to people. And, like, whether He's whether it's new or not it in terms of the science, years. like, it doesn't matter. But, yeah, but I'm talking about, like, the general public and trying to trying to message to them in the correct way. Like, I, I think we should have known our audience a way better than we did. We should never have told the American people that masks protect other people from you. We should have told them that masks protect you from other people. Everyone would have fucking worn it, okay? <laughs> uh, but, like, back, but, but uh, hold on, can... Can I? But, but can I? Me in the same state, he knows exactly what's happening. <laughs> but 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 Jason, I, I I just I want to point this out to you though is like so so for instance like when when you hear that that can be off putting to the people who are skeptical because if they're gonna say that like COVID nineteen um it, you know it's a new disease mRNA technology might have been around for the past twenty years but these are the the whole reason why we had Operation Warp Speed was to develop new vaccinations these weren't things that we just had lying around we so so basically iterations for the flu vaccine every single year every single year it's a new okay iteration. mRNA. So okay, are you, true. Are you scared flu of every new iteration of the flu, flu vaccine? But okay, but but I'm I'm pr I'm pretty sure mRNA has had like super limited application for the past twenty years, um, and, and it's largely been research based. I'm pretty sure that two of the three vaccines are mRNA based. But what what I'm trying to say is the um the, the skepticism or whatever we should be trying to alleviate that skepticism through uh for for the people who are like good faith basically. Um, and what I mean by that is um so for instance we. We have yes. um, Wi Fi oh, no. kicked in again. Damn it. Uh, yeah, okay. I, I warned him about being. If his internet cuts out, I will ask Pan a question. So just wait a second. Okay. okay. Save me from the Pan. question. Thing. Yeah, Pan. So I have a question. So local community is like, yo, we need masks. We need all this shit. And then the state's like, no. And then from there, you know, like as an anarchist, I want the local autonomy, right? I want them to make that decision, like the local group. When, the, when you have a governing power structure says no, and then they're like, well, shit, and then they try to, like, follow that. And if the state government's like, no, we're not going to give you any access to this, how do we resolve that? I have to ask that question. How do we resolve that if without, without like, the, the fucking federal uh, government? Having, like, a higher power? Yeah. Well, I mean, generally, I would just say non-enforcement of the law. I mean, if this... If you know, police are local, everything is local, right? If, if enough of your community is really against the law, enforcing the law is really hard. What about state um, troopers and uh, removing federal funding? What, how, well, what, how do you respond to that whenever you vitally need that income in order to make have a sustainable school system? I mean, I don't, I guess, uh, I'd have to think about that. I don't know. Uh, okay. I guess my, ideally, I would hope that schools, you know... Wait, no, wait, 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 this is the problem. We're getting caught in idealism. Family. We gotta be pragmatic here. How do we pragmatically resolve the issue with our system as it is? How do we pragmatically no, do you that? you can't. The answer is you can't, right? Yeah, no, you can. Yeah. It's called the federal government says, hey, state government, stop that. Uh, uh, but they don't have the authority. authority. The purpose of the federal government. The federal the federal government, government is uh, but I'm not, I'm not state governments with that. Okay. their boundaries even in localities like that. That's where you want your federal government. You don't want them up in your business all the time, but these are circumstances where it fits. Let's, yeah, let's like, I, I completely about... support the federal government intervening if it means, you know, to stop states' overreach of power, right? I feel mm -hmm. like I, I'm okay with that, right? Okay. I, I definitely support... That's why I support, you know, Biden doing this, right? Okay. Because, you know, the state is the one who is overreaching their powers and the federal okay. government is correcting that. Now, I wish that's not always going to be the case because sometimes the state and federal agree, but when it is the case, yeah, I think that's fine. Yeah, I, okay. Yeah. I just I think the thing that we should point out, though, is that there's nothing like unconstitutional happening, right? There's a principle that's being violated. There's not like a law or anything that's being violated, right? So do you think uh, creating our laws around are sh are created around principles the the principle of uh we shouldn't yeah, kill other created people around principle, but but w to be a nation the ultimate authority is going to be as as you raise the power the amount of power is going to increase so your local we want our, our our local politics to be empowered 
but we understand that the state does have more control and then the federal has more control than the state. We want things to happen at the lowest level. That's our principle. But we understand that because we live in like a, a, a nation that as we increase the power level also increases. So the ability to override is there. We don't want to use that, right, unless needed. And we could say that this situation we feel like is needed, right? So that's our principle in how some people are trying to stick to it, right? So, I, I don't yeah. like it, uh, but... Right. Well, we're going to do the... Um, so I'm actually curious about the last part of the topic. Um, so, Wordy, you said that if the local um, you know, uh, representatives or whatever wanted a mask mandate and the state level government was saying no, you'd want the local... Uh, decision to be re to be respected, but what if it were the reverse? What if the local government didn't want a mandate, and and the state government said, "Hey, we're, we're going to we're going to set in place a mandate." Would you still want the local uh, government respected? I would say if it basically is going to increase and likely cause the harm of people, no, I wouldn't. Basically, so you don't actually I, care about the local. No, control, no, right? no, no, no. Wait, wait. Doobie, 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 doobie. No, stop, 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 stop. Okay, I'm not. I'm not. I'm opinion. not existing in a binary. Okay, I'm existing in a nuance. So the nuance here is, I care about local control. I want to maximize local control to the extent possible. But when a local control is directly working against the interest of promoting health and welfare of people, then I. What if those people don't want the mask mandate? If they don't want the mass mandate, well, they're basically is like, yo, if you don't want the mass mandate, suck it up, Buttercup. Okay, so you, okay, so you don't care about local control. So if a community says, hey, we don't want this mass mandate, you're gonna say, okay, well, okay. I know it's better for you. So let me ask you, you a question. You do. So whenever, so, so whenever a minority of the population says we don't want the say, mass hey, mandate, you need to have this mass mandate, and if you don't, I'll, you're not gonna be able to. So let me ask. So let me ask you a question. So let me let me ask you a question. Do you acknowledge COVID is bad? That's not the question. No, right? no, no. So, Let me ask you a question. Do you acknowledge COVID's bad? Yes, COVID's bad. So we should have masks. Sure, that's not what I'm asking you, right? You're the one that's... No, no, I, I'm asking you a couple questions to lead up to an ultimate yes. point here. So okay. it, we yes, should have masks yes, to prevent have. COVID. So if people are refusing to wear masks, how do we enforce that? Do we just let them fucking die? So wordy, no, really quickly, so wordy... To be clear, I don't give a fuck about local control, right? I want the federal government to control this uh, public schools, right? You do, right? You say you care about local control. You're an, you're an anarchist or whatever yes. the fuck you are. So what I'm wondering is when, when the local, when the community disagrees with you, mm -hmm. it says, hey, we're already, we understand you're saying this is bad, but we don't want the mass mandate. So sorry, we're not going to do it. You're saying that you tell these people, hey, sorry, I know it's better. For, I know it's best for you. Well, you're you're going to do it anyway. And if you don't do it, there are Yeah, I, I live on these two that principles. Seem... It's called, I want to not die. And it's, I... called, it's called, yeah. you know what's best for people and fuck what they say. Hey, hey, That's hey, what it Doobie, is. shut the Let's fuck up, okay? No, 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 no. I can be real fucking honest about this, okay? There are two fucking principles that exist in my life, okay? It's called making sure people don't fucking head. die and making sure people can live to experience the world, okay? And then those two principles basically is the government shouldn't have the state control but unfortunately i can't get rid of the state government as it is right now so i have to basically say hey you're in charge here get your fucking job done because i don't want people fucking dying wordy but th this is my problem that i think doobie is, is pointing out is that like emergencies always exist like there, there's always threats to life that you, you know uh motorcycles cigarettes alcohol uh you know all that kind of shit like like a whole, a whole bunch of freedom is predicated on risk so, so basically when you're, when you're talking about like my axiomatic principle, my fundamental principle is that I want people to be able to experience life and I want them to be able to live. Well, th this is like the justification for every authoritarian regime that's ever existed ever. It, you, you know, the, the Nazis just wanted good lives for Germans, you know, the, the fucking, uh, the Russians just wanted good, good lives for Russians. And they rooted their ideology in the security of the people that they represented and then they used that in order to assert their authority. And, and it was as haphazard as you, where you're saying like, oh, I want local control. I think local control is important. I want to maximize freedom. Oh, it turns out that there's an emergency. Well, fuck that. Like, uh, you know, we're going to use state authority in order to enforce our will. Like, th th that's why we live so, in a republic. Well, that's the, why well, we the, have well, the problem rules. comes, though, is the same government that is basically enforcing the mass mandates. It's the same government that failed to deal with the COVID crisis. So basically, the whole pro process that comes here is but the not, same same group of people in power caused this issue in the first place. I'm like, you fucked up. You caused the issue. It's your fucking job to resolve the issue. Wait, what? There, okay, no, what do you think was preventable? There was no state that wouldn't have happened. Yeah, okay, so, so, so let's say 
we're in an anarchist society, right? And there's okay. a pandemic, right? And so it's not the same government that fucked us up. And one of these little communities says, hey, we don't want masks. We're not going to wear masks. We know we know the rest of you little communities are saying, hey, uh, you should wear a mask. We're saying no. We're, we're not going to have a Yeah, mask. this is what I would say is everybody who doesn't want to live in that community will give you options out. And you guys can be fuck off and die on your own, I guess. Oh, you know what, though? Okay. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. What right. happens in that community does affect the communities surrounding it, okay? And that's why there can be intervention. Because the other communities who want to wear masks, who want to be responsible, who want to follow the science, are now impacted as soon as these petri dishes decide to go into their community. And that's where the problem lies. That's why it. Need, that's why you have to have the state intervention. That's why you have to have the federal intervention. Because once you start crossing state lines and bringing these citizens from other states into other states where they do mandate masks, where they do mandate vaccines, where they do actually care about their citizens. This is constitutional. We all agree. Wow. So, no, 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 no. GSU. Yeah. The, the reason why I like Jason making this point is because like you fundamentally recreate the state in like thirty fucking seconds, and yeah. there are a bunch of fucking. There are I, ANCOMs in fucking chat who are like, oh, I want an anarcho-communist society. And they're like, oh, what about all these negative externalities? And they're like, oh, well, we'll just break the rules this one fucking time. And it's like, no, you're not. So, you're gonna wait, 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 Connor, there. Connor, so, the problem so, comes, though, is like, right, you, you can never get rid of violence as a means and a tool. So what you should do is minimize, like, the concentration of it. So basically, if you divert it into local communities, there's less compelling force. Like, the same institution that produces these... COVID misinformation produces the anti-vaxxer movement. It's the same person that is causing these issues in the first place. Like, no, but, but it's that no, it's that concentration I mean, of power that dependence when they fail to educate people on vaccine information. When if they do all these components that lead to these consequences, right? You have to break down at the sociological level. What causes anti-vaccine movements is distrust of government, the failure to enact policies, no! and then two, no! two, whenever they purposely fail to education. These two aspects lead to the anti-vaccine movement. No, 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 no. I was going to try to help you, Wordy, but no, I think that's partially true. Yeah, no, okay, that's partially true. Problematic, really quick. What causes fucking anti-vax movements is stupid free people who are free to share their shitty opinion on the fucking internet. So you either want Education. a free society that is capable of being stupid, or you want a secure society in which you dictate how they live. You can't have both. We, this is we, the we had a secure society when people were dying even whenever Trump was in charge? I, okay, so here, no, 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 this is another thing. Pred predates Trump by fucking okay. decades. Okay, probably. and here's, yeah. here's what, another what point. There, there's I, another I, point. There's another point here. You were saying that it was the responsibility of the state to intervene in the fucking pandemic. The, the, to me, the pandemic is like a fucking force of nature. It's like a fucking hurricane. So, so no, no, like, the, no, but like the problem- you don't the control the weather. No, the problem comes is it's a force of nature, but we can definitely set up methods to resolve the force of nature or deal with the force of nature more effectively. We cut our fucking health programs, we fucking failed to educate the populace, and we fucking did so much shit that basically everybody's like, fuck the government. And that these, all these issues all exacerbate into these movements. Like, it's not just things happening just randomly on its own, they are brought subject to material conditions. Material condition is the fucking people in power who basically sowed this shit, okay? Like, basically, all these consequences, all these externalities are producing these movements. They don't just happen naturally on their fucking Wordy. own. Wordy, do you think freedom is important? I say freedom, yeah. Positive and negative freedom. You don't understand that basically what Counterpoints were saying is that if you have a free society, there are going to be people to choose to do things that you might not choose for yourself, right? Yeah, and if they're harming me, I say, hey, fuck off. Stop. Yeah, but I'm just saying that, that like, that's the, that is the fundamental part of this. There are going to be people who make decisions that are contrary to what you think is best. That's what true freedom wait, is. Wait, 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 wait. There, there's a difference between people do things that, that harm each other. Yeah, there's a difference people. between yeah, making. No, no one like, believes. That's there, why we believe. stop, like, drunk there, drivers. You can't drive after wait. you've been drinking All alcohol right. because now you have the right to hurt other people. Yeah, there's a difference between somebody making a decision that's contrary versus like something that's going to directly impact me. Somebody getting, somebody, uh, I don't know, taking a heroin is not going to impact me, but if you fucking get that's COVID, that is impacting me. It absolutely could. It could. You can swing your fist so long as, uh, as, as far as the tip of my nose, but once Yeah, you touch social contract here. You don't get me sick, I don't get you sick.
Okay, so so Randy, would you agree with like uh, banning or putting restrictions on the amount of fast food people can can eat? That Wait, doesn't... hold on. I'm sorry. Wait, what? No, no, no. no, no, no. Okay, no, no. Well, so what he's trying to do is he's trying to figure out where Wordy um, w does think local control matters, right? He's right. looking for so, instances so, of that. So yeah, me, so, let me, so let me, if, because, no, because I can answer the question. The if if it's fast food, I don't need to ban it. I think... Why? Wait, but but these people get fat, right? They consume a lot of it. They consume too much. They get fat. They they cost a lot of money in the healthcare system, which raises everybody's taxes and takes up hospital rooms from otherwise healthy people. Hurts the economy, right? So, like, why why should we allow these people? To oh yeah. So here's here's real easy. The, the, the people who consume it, I say we should get rid of the companies that basically trying to force, to basically drive people towards consuming fast food instead of the fucking consumers. They're the they're the end result, not the produ not the like the creators of the issue. They're the end result of the issue. No. Okay. Okay. Hold on. I, can I please address this? Can I please address this? Broken I'm pretty Okay, I'm pretty sure that the fucking anti-vax movement started with a bunch of rich fucking bitches in Southern California that fucking didn't want to get fucking Aiden and Kylan and fucking Jason a bunch of fucking shots because they felt like shit that they were going to make their kids cry because California is a place for, like, pussy-ass fucking communists, right? All right, so I'm pretty sure that's where fucking anti-vax uh, anti fucking shit started. It's oh, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, and if they're stupid enough to have bad... All right, so anyways... Anti-vaccine anti has... Has long history in this country. A very long history. That very okay. that surpasses whatever happens in fucking California. Okay, I'm blaming yeah, California. Doctor Wakefield in Britain, who uh, who was the or uh, who they, they okay. he was the one who got it started in the 70s. I think there is this an element of this. Can I just, can I just can I that? Because I'm Jason. Percent. I got vaccinated. <laughs> Okay. Wakefield was much later than the seventies. Um, uh, was, yeah. That was that was fifty percent shit post. The, the the okay. The just really quick. I'll try to be quick, Doobie. Um, the the fucking point though is is that you can always come up with reasons why public policy should be implemented for the people's own good. These exigent circumstances. The only reason why you care about them is because they're in your face. And a lot of the the rhetoric and the motivated reasoning that you're using to like protect people from themselves and protect other people, they can be logically applied to a whole whole bunch of things that we take for granted within our society. So you kind of have to ask yourself, like, what's more important to you, freedom or security? And what is the balance between these two principles? Because honestly, I could extrapolate out a lot of what you said into shitloads of things wait, that Americans wait, 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 wait. do Connor, and Connor, create Connor, a completely Connor, different society. Connor, the problem comes, though, is we can ver verifiably show effects. We can't, you can't verifiably show the effect of uh, having Jews you in your country. No, no, shut the fuck up. So you can't you verifiably can't, show the like, effect of having doing? Jews in your country is a Nazi, but you can't verify that you show the effect of COVID, right? I like to exist in empirical fucking reality. The empirical reality is that, hey, COVID kills people. What? Oh, fucking... I'm gonna shoot myself in Minecraft. Drugs are harmful to society? Yeah, drugs are harmful to society, but you know why people consume drugs? It's because they're driven towards drugs. No, no, people love drugs because drugs are fun! Hold on, wait, he's, he's, he's drugs. drugs. Yes. Say stupid shit. Gambit, 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 Gambit. Yeah, he's gonna continue to say stupid really stuff. Really expensive so one. Wait, you, I'm gonna keep oh, saying okay. stupid shit. I can keep pointing to reasons why people actually do these things. These are real things that fucking occur. About, Congratulations, don't you don't care about no, shit. I'm, no, I'm saying I don't care about the point you're trying to make. Doesn't matter. So would you be for banning drugs since drugs have been shown to increase violence and blah blah blah? I I would be in favor yeah. of limiting the consequences because the consequences are what cause these issues in the first place. Basically, it says no, but what? no, no. But reg regardless of the people what in the causes... conditions where they don't feel the need to self medicate. Yeah, exactly. People do drugs regardless. Yeah, people are going to do drugs, but you know what you regardless. can. No, people are going to do. Wait, wait, Jesus, shut, 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 stop, stop. Okay, people are what going to consume drugs, shit. but you know, but no, wait, wait, but you know why people are driven towards drugs? It's because there's no other fucking way they can make money to do it, right? Listen, drugs perpetuate no, through the fucking, Listen, the war on drugs happened, like dude. Drugs. Like, some are you ex- so, 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 uh, why would you make alcohol? Connor, I hate you. Okay, so I will say that there is <laughs> no well, there's, 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 there's a difference between what he's saying. Really, no, 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 hold up, hold up. Hey, let, me, let me say no, no, one more in, sentence. Okay. No, 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 so we understood that there are things that can have negative consequences in our society, but because we think freedom is paramount, we allow these things to exist. That's the real answer. Regardless of how you affect material conditions, there will be people who like drugs, there will be people who do drugs, there will be people who do terrible things on drugs. But we accept 
in our society we value freedom so there are things like alcohol because the government knows how to tax and blah blah, blah that we allow to be legal and we allow to to infiltrate our society have you heard of the but thing of negative have you heard you of know, positive and negative freedoms criminalizing it is worse than legalizing it that's the problem well, and we've already seen or we've already seen that yes we've but seen Gam in gambit's case it would still be a problem even if it was legalized right uh, alcohol still has negative effects even though it's legalized. So his point is yeah. that, yes, a lot of it might come from the prohibition, but there are some negative effects that we tolerate because we value freedom. Yeah, but exactly. we do, yes. think, we do I... things to punish people who are actually engaging in the action that has negative offenses on, on directly on people. That's why you can't drive drunk or high, or you can't go, you can't go fucking operate a backhoe, a backhoe with, after smoking a fucking blunt on lunch. Like we, fucked we, up, we, but yeah, we, we, we limit <laughs> it what like people fun, can though. do to actually to actually prevent some of the negative consequences. So that's why that's why, like, fuck, if we're if we're talking about covid specifically, we're not requiring people to get vaccines. We're just saying you can't engage in polite society if you don't, because that's the action that leads to harm. You going out Wait, and going no, to but... movie theaters and stuff like that is the action that's causing harm. OK, yeah. but the, the issue is that. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but Wordy, I think what you said earlier is that, uh, you know, so long as they're not impacting you or the community, you know, you're not going to ban these things or whatever, or, or you're going to you're gonna prioritize their freedom. But when you look at something like, like alcohol, right, um, because this is illegal, we have a lot of really good statistics on the outcomes, right, and what, what this does in our society. And for things like um, domestic violence, sexual assault, uh, murder, um, fights, right? Uh, if, you, if you look at those those like crimes in, in our in, in our uh, uh, country, um, each one of those like like oh, almost I think like some of them like over fifty percent. The others like like near fifty percent of those crimes in this country are happen under the, the influence of alcohol. Okay. Right. So if it's something that you you care about, you right, you care about making sure that people are free to live their lives without worrying about this, um, about being beaten up or raped or whatever, right? Yeah. Then why wouldn't you want to ban alcohol? Well, it's because the alcohol is a compound confounding factor, but it ultimately is determined by other variables, right? Domestic violence is a lot of part of what we call rape culture. Men feel some kind of empowerment over women. They feel they can get away with a lot more shit than if a woman was to do it. And that's a reality. And then basically that shit happens and then alcohol confounds the factor. The alcohol doesn't cause it. It instead is this lack of like one responsibility, accountability, and all these other factors that influence this behavior. So basically every... Of, yeah. Yeah, every other factor. Lack of inhibition. Yeah, this, these other factors that apply, like just, you can't just ignore them. You have to basically determine what factors are more overriding and what cause the most series of behaviors. Alcohol causes plenty of issues, but these other factors are more relevant and more important. Wordy, okay, but th this is the the one thing that I'm hearing over and over again that that I just fundamentally disagree with. Um, you you kind of keep saying like, oh, well, it's like the material conditions or it's the corporations or it's this, that or the other. But I, I think there's people are they have a whole bunch of drives. The reason why people do drugs is because they're fucking fun and being high feels good. Right. The reason why people eat fast food is because it's filled with fat and sugar. And we as, you know, fucking evolved creatures think that fat and sugar is high, color, high calorie. And since it's high calorie, we've evolved to have taste buds for it. Uh, we like to we like to have aggressive and weird sex uh, because sex is probably tied to procreation. So even if you're not making kids, you have a you have a biological incentive to engage in sexual behaviors, even if it doesn't actually result in kids. So the the thing that I keep hearing is like kind of passing the buck over and over again to like institutions and like social factors and like all this kind of stuff. Whereas at the end of the day, I, especially from a conservative perspective, I just think people are fucked up some of the time. Okay, and, and that's where oh, but just, final point. This is where anarchism to me is is kind of like a fucking meme because I think you need the state to bully people into some level of like moderate and normal fucking behavior and without that fucking threat of implied violence and social pressure people are fucking degenerate goddamn animals so okay so the problem comes though so so, so uh, we're gonna wrap it up with this and we're gonna move okay. on to like the rest of the question okay I don't want to just be on anarchism okay so the problem comes though right is when we look at what institutions what 
things influence the most, right? When you have an entire overarching government body that determines laws and all these different factors, right? For a long time, women didn't have control over their lives. And you know what I was reinforced by? The state. It created those conditions for these realities, right? We talk about systemic racism. People aren't naturally racist on their own, but when you have an institution that reinforces racism, you know what happens? I'm looking at the more greater influence. People are a little fucked up. I will admit that. But people are driven to be more fucked up with overarching institutions that basically either un does not check their behavior or is like basically let these behaviors consistently occur to where it eventually develops into the culture itself. And so basically, like, it's the whole chicken and... I found and our next debate. I found yeah. our next debate yeah. topic. It, it's the whole chicken <laughs> and the egg argument. What comes first? What has more, infect, more effect? For me, overarching powerful institutions create the chicken, and then the chicken bursts the egg, and it's reinforced by a circular cycle. That's basically the whole problem. What, what okay. starts first? Got it. Great. <laughs> All right. I want to get back to, um, you know, assuming that we will have a state, because we're going to have a state, um, like, uh, with the powers... Um, and that they, that it uses, is it, uh, is it right that the federal government, um, is stepping in, um, in this particular case? So, uh, Prime, yeah. if, if Trump would have did what you said in the question, the media mm -hmm. would have demonized him. I think that's, I think maybe 100%. we should all agree with that. Hell yeah. Yep. If he, if he, he was giving be, uh, well, support to anti-mask right people, then that would be fucking horrendous. Yeah, and, and the reality is that some people here would have demonized him. I would say, oh, God, the federal government coming in and taking away local yep. you know, local freedoms and shit like that. Right, but suddenly it doesn't yeah, matter because you have. agree. Well, yeah, that's, 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 well, yeah because my that's... Argument. My yeah, argument we, but that's... Federal government actually, I would have, I would, I would have patted my, Trump my on the back if he came in for this shit, and he did what was right. I would have patted him on the back and said, great job. I'm saying no, 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 Jason, if he had said, hey, keep mass anti-mask day up, uh, mandates, that's what he was, that's what he would have done. Oh, no, I'm saying if he decided to say, yeah, mask mandates for everybody, you know, you gotta understand, though, he would have gotten shit for the same that. That way, it's too. not the question. Yeah, yeah, it's not the question. The question was yeah. if, if the, if, if at the lower level they wanted to have masks and Trump said, "Hey, well, I'm not going to give you funding unless you don't wear masks." That's the question that's, that we got sent. Yeah, which yeah. is actually exactly. Uh, so, yeah, but you know, no, I, false. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, go ahead. yeah. No, I would, I would, I would still be, I would be against Trump doing that, but that's because I wouldn't be making the argument that you know these local the like he's superseding like local authority it would be that he's literally just doing something idiotic so uh, the the only reason why we talk so much about about like well they had they're 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 doing this local this local level authority and stuff like that is because is because that's the talking point is that well now the federal government's stepping over state boundaries it's like well i don't really care the the federal government's doing what it should be my argument is never about local is is not about local authority it's the the government is doing its role yeah so for me as a whole it's basically is i i have a few set principles i like people uh being alive and i want people to have as much happiness as possible and if an institution has control over people's lives and they're failing to do fulfill its job then I'm like, yo, you gotta fulfill your job. You want me to accept your power? Fucking fulfill your job. And that's the whole pro process is each principle I have, I would like to adhere to as much as possible, but there are instances where I'm okay with violating principles in order to come to a better outcome. I think so, everybody agrees with that. We all have principles. Nothing, you've said it, Connor, yourself. You don't believe in democracy to the full extent. You think if we can adhere to democracy, and this is the same instance, we should try adhere to autonomy and in as much control as you want as on a local level as much as you can until you start doing some real stupid shit yeah, yeah I, I think it's fair to have prima facie principles you know principles that you generally follow but there are exceptions i mean to be fair to wordy i i do think that there is a huge difference because of how contagious the coronavirus is i don't think he's really violating his principles that much uh uh, or his principles of local autonomy, but clearly I don't think local autonomy is the issue here. I think I'm probably, and with the exception of Wordy, probably the only people who really care about local autonomy. So I think we should just move on to talking about, you know, the whether or not the mask mandates, you know, are good or bad. Yeah, I, I said it at the beginning of this that I didn't think that this was an issue necessarily of states' rights versus the federal government. 
or anything like that. I think that's just a false dichotomy. Like that's that's framing the question and 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 the whole thing in the wrong, in the wrong way to look at it. Because again, like this is we're talking about a pandemic, and we're talking about vaccines and masks, two things proven to help during a pandemic. So it's like we're not. This is this is not the same thing as like. Uh, whatever whatever you want to want to bring up it's it's really not no like choice or whatever it's whatever just not to, and like know, we're, like... we're we're talking about adding a vaccine to a list of vaccines that people are already getting you know what i'm talking about and 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 to go to jason's point that he made earlier we're talking about a vaccine with a lot of research at least in the development behind it like the mrna vaccine has been researched for years now as he pointed out so like um you know this is I think that the the politicizing of this shows like people's true colors. Not anybody here, of course. Wait, hold well, on. Um, I think, I think it is a political here. question, though. Not not anybody here. I already said that. It's a political question if you want to add it to the list of, of mandatory vaccines, right? But no, but question. I think everyone here supports mask mandates, right? Is anybody here against mask mandates? I I, uh, I think it depends. Uh, I was about to say, I think private and public institutions should be making decisions for what they want to implement, and then basically the the community that they serve should uh, basically reinforce or criticize that decision. Um, no, so for but, wait, mm -hmm. but to be clear, I'm not asking for a random uh, local municipality's opinion. I'm asking for y'all's on this panel, right? So if you were in authority and you could either implement mass mandates or not i'm asking who here would say i don't want to implement mass mandates and why it's just only I because i've wouldn't. never heard somebody argue that like in an effective way in any means it's always like mass okay. kill people and they like bring back in the co2 and they die like it's wild shit right so i just want to hear like a um, actual argument. yeah I, I probably would not um i would want uh you know i would definitely encourage people to wear masks because the science you know clearly shows masks and vaccines work with almost no side effects however I, I do believe that uh private institutions should be able to have mask mandates but i don't think it's up for the government to decide which institutions do that right so i don't think there needs to be mask mandates but considering most you know most spaces can, are can, are private i think it's okay f and should be encouraged for them to have mask mandates so like if safeway wants to have a mask mandate i think that's their prerogative but i don't think if Safeway doesn't want to have a mask mandate, well, then you just shouldn't go to Safeway then. Hey, what, if, what right. about the federal government in terms of the its employees? Like, can the federal government uh, give a mask mandate to its employees at least? Fuck yeah. Like, okay. like, like, well, I'm, asking, I'm asking problematic Pan. I, he's being very yeah. problematic right now. I think I go, oh, the rest <laughs> yeah. of us are yeah. agree. So, look, I mean... Pan, let me, let me ask you this real pointed, okay? So... We are have the science that masks wait, help. Wait, my question. Though. Wait, yeah, wait, sorry. Yeah, you sorry. Don't your care about your question. Sorry, Captain Agents. I, I care. I care. I, um, should they be allowed to require their own federal uh, yeah, employees? I think, should I think the so. federal yeah. government, like, yeah, as an yeah, employer. Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, I, I would prefer the federal government had less employees that they can mandate it to. But yeah, I think that. Uh, yeah, yeah I, sure. federal government should the biggest employer in the country. I know, Listen, but I, I did, I did way more fucked up shit. For the federal government than put a fucking cloth on my fucking face. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> oh, like, like, yeah, yeah. Like, no, they I mean, definitely told me I didn't have a choice. They did yeah, not yeah, make yeah. that shit optional. So, if you're, the, if you're in the military, they have every fucking right to mandate mass fucking Pan. vaccines. Fucking, if they want you to take fucking toxic waste and you're in the military, I, I think they have pretty much full control. Pan, I have to ask you one question. So, say like this, okay? So, we have the science, right? Uh, say a local community doesn't want to implement masks and people there are getting more sick and they're actively dying and then you just like nope nope and then and then the people in that community are like yo we're fucking dying and the local government doesn't implement it then you're like what the fuck do we do do we just let them fucking die yeah well i yeah. mean <laughs> eventually you know yeah. the people who die would be the ones without the mask right so the problem will solve itself wait 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 even <sighs> i'm i'm kidding but I like. No, I'm, I'm not. I I will bite this bullet. Fucking yeah. yes. Like, like yes. free. Do Do you want a perfectly secure society, or do you want a society in which uh, there's balance of power and people can exercise their freedom even in stupid ways? Probably ten thousand fucking assholes a year break their goddamn backs on fucking dirt bikes. I'm not going to be trying to ban fucking dirt bikes anytime soon. But that people. But, but how does the dirt bike hurt? How, how does the dirt bike hurt other people? Like, I what direct consequences does it have? You can do things to protect the people who are doing drugs. We, we'll just parry to a different one. Like, yeah. no, you, I mean, no, you can use your I, I have an example here. Like, 
Wait, hold on. So, so any any like injury like that raises the cost of healthcare for everybody else because of the way that health insurance no. works in this country. Well, no. Like, oh. yes. Yes. That's true. No, no, wait. Yes. Hey, we we know that like where we went over this before. Like that's oh my god, you're like doing this in the conversation every time. We know there are freedoms that we afford to people that can negatively impact others. We can parry to drugs. We can parry to a whole bunch of other shit. Guns. There are things that have guns. There are things that have negative consequences. So every time we get to this conversation, don't say, "Oh, blah blah blah." Like we, you understand the the like spirit of what. But but you is. but do you agree that we should try to minimize the consequences at least? Yeah, so yeah. Always, but I I don't think they, I don't I think there's a little bit of a false dichotomy. If you're in this situation where they're not uh, mandating masks and you're really concerned about coronavirus because you're not an idiot. There are things that you can do to make sure that you don't get it. You can be, you know, you can double mask. You can get one of those fucking fancy masks. You can make sure to get vaccinated yourself. There's, you can do a lot of things. Um, if the community, now this is an ideal, obviously the ideal situation is everyone not be a fucking idiot and get vaccinated and wear a mask. But there are things that you can do. It's not just you're forced to die if other okay. people. Okay. So, you but let me ask you. Them. Okay. So w we've done that, right? And then these people refuse to get masked, and then you know what happens? They keep the fucking coronavirus around, and I'm still fucked to stay in my house more. I'm still fucked to wear a mask all the time, and I like. Oh, this yeah, is. Yeah, I'm just... just about it too. I don't like it either. Like basically, it's you're just like. I have a lot of contempt for people who won't get vaccinated. I don't. Wear a I just uh, the frustration for me that comes more or than anything is you just you just you're just letting people like you're just like saying ah oh, fuck it. I think you should bully them into fucking oblivion. That's my solution. So, I think uh, of, like, I, I feel like, I feel like there's a there's a there's a line here though. Okay, like here's my thing. If you're if if you're in a space where people have the choice to get vaccinated and have the ability to get vaccinated and they do so and other choose not to then you know you could make the argument okay well fend for yourself dude you know what i can get vaccinated you can't or are choosing not to and that's going to be what it is i'm going to be safe you're not but here's where the problem comes in when you go to like convalescent living when you go to nursing homes when you go to elementary schools there needs to be mandates because these kids cannot be vaccinated they don't have a choice in the matter they're completely vulnerable they're a mass population one in four covid victims right now is a child under the age of 12. no there is absolutely a reason okay. to manage no, yeah. not, there's no way that's true that's not, okay but that's I, the amount of children under 12 so, no, wait, 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 yeah. Jason, can you send a reference for the nonsense that you just said okay but even let, let even if we are you talking about cases down, of death so uh connor and False. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Even, yeah. even, yeah. okay. But even if we bite, let's just say that we fucking bite the bullet on the, the cases. Let's say there's negative secondary health effects, all that kind of shit or whatever. This is where I think it's up to public and private institutions to decide what they're going to do. We live in a fucking free society. We know what fucking works. Institutions are, are accountable to the people at the local fucking level. If you have a lo local fucking school board that's not fucking implementing masks and not implementing fucking vaccines, then you can fucking pull your kid out and do fucking virtual learning. There are options in order to accommodate fucking everybody. And if a school board makes the inverse decision where they say, yes, absolutely, every fucking employee needs to be vaccinated and every fucking kid needs to wear a mask, and then a student is like, hey, I don't want to get vaccinated and I don't want to wear a fucking mask, then guess what, bitch? You're on fucking virtual learning. Get your fucking ass home. And that that's the thing is there's choices and the ability to exercise power. I think the reason why GSU and I keep getting fucking frustrated about this shit is because, like, you have to fucking choose and balance two principles. Freedom, security. If you want perfect security, then you want zero freedom. If you want 100% uh, freedom, then you're going to have dog shit fucking security. These things are not necessarily, like, completely conflicting principles, but they are at odds a decent chunk of the time. But you're and we but live you're in a free society. But you keep going. Go ahead, buddy. You, you keep going this 100% freedom route, but like the freedom to fucking kill other people with your fucking COVID. Let's let's go to sure. a boss, boss. Yeah, I I just have to ask because you guys have brought up like drugs and stuff like that as other examples. What do you guys think about already have it, the the already mandatory vaccines we have for public school? Yeah, do you think I, we should get rid of that or why would we get no. rid of it? If, are we wait? Are you? Aren't you limiting your freedom to be able to go to school by having to have vaccines? Like, how, no, how, I mean, how the is... School, the school mm -hmm. decided to have that as a condition of attendance. Yeah, no, the state did. Okay, well... Good! 
I guess I guess I can ask um I, 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 I think I, I can maybe ask the same question in a more pointed way maybe. Um because you know most Americans go to public schools. I, I think I think most um or all private schools have, have like these these same vaccines as a requirement for admission to if I remember correct. I'll actually look this up a long time ago. But um so in effect what's happening, right, is that uh um being an American, right, living functionally without without any hindrance, going to our public schools, or using our, our institutions in, in the United States, uh, comes with the requirement that you get injected with a bunch of shit at some point, right? And are we okay with that? I'm I'm personally okay with that. I don't give a fuck. Yes. Right? But and I think I think most of you here would be okay with that. But I think we have to be honest about what that is, right? It's the saying that it, to exist in this country, you need to get injected with some shit. Right, uh, just just like you know, uh, the the Obama thing, uh, the the healthcare mandate is hey, to exist in this country as an adult and not get penal penalized, you need to have health insurance, right? Like, yeah, I think some things, some like people 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 like talk about freedom as if it's like, you know, like this fucking divine right or some shit. I, I think sometimes it's okay to restrict freedoms for the greater good, and I think that's what that is. Well, Nobody but do, but Doobie, I don't think we would, or at least I wouldn't, I wouldn't disagree with you. I, I think a private or a public institution has the right to mandate the standards that they need in order to, for people to gain admittance. So for instance, I'm on standby. I'm waiting for them to fucking get uh, green light COVID vaccines for my kids so I can get them fucking vaccinated. I can't fucking wait. I'm so excited to, to fucking inject him with experimental chemicals. But what I'm saying is, is that there's dumb fucks out there. And I think it sets a really nasty precedent when you say the, the government says for the greater good, you have to inject chemicals in your fucking body. And uh, even if you take alternative accommodations to not participate in public society, you have to do this thing. Fuck that. Like, like basically what I would say is the private and public institutions of society can make determinations on who they're going to let into their institutions. And then it's up to those people on whether or not they want to fucking do it. I think it's weird as shit to, to insist on principle that for the greater fucking good, the government gets to inject you with whatever the fuck it says is necessary. That's a Wait, really Wait, they're not even injecting you. Say. I actually concur you're with you on that counterpoint. So I think that's a great point. I think uh, if you're talking about like people where they're not in situations with a lot of other vulnerable people and they're choosing to uh, seclude themselves from society, they don't want to be a part of the public. They're and I, you know, I know people who have a uh, Guillaume, uh, Guillaume bombs syndrome i think that's what it's called and they can't get vaccinated and they are seriously staying home not only because they can't get vaccinated and don't want to take the risk of getting it infecting somebody else but because they're scared as hell about getting it okay right. so so i so do i do want to i do want to say th one thing if if a group of people say hey we don't want to interact in society we're never going to go out and shit like i would say as long as you're not harming people outside of your small little group sure like the fucking uh Amish, right? They're not harming other people. They're doing their own thing. But the same, the problem comes though is these people who are demanding these lack of mass mandates, not having these mandatory vaccines, are the same people says I get to do what I want, and then they basically say they don't want any consequences. And it's like it's the frustration for me is like they they want freedom, but they want freedom from consequences. And like, oh man, yeah. Yeah, and, 100%. And, and we agree. And that's the frustration for me, is you're basically asserting is, like, the, the consequences applying to other people don't fucking matter. And enough of this what about, about drugs here. It's, like, vaccines, good. And then people are, like, well, small freedoms, and they're, like, fuck the consequences when their consequences are killing thousands of other people. Okay. How do we resolve that issue? Well... Th these other people don't view vaccines as good, though. That's that's the main problem. Congratulations, they the they're stupid. To... Who cares? Yeah, I'm aware, but yes, to... yes, they're fucking morons. But look at it from their perspective. From their perspective, they think the government's trying to inject them with like fucking heroin or some shit, right? Mm. So how, See, like I would be fine with problem. I would be fine with their critiques if it was actually like you know like good. Like I would say like oh the government's having a lot of these issues. Like oh you know like government forces you do this or that and you you can make these critiques but when you basically critique it just to be stupid instead of like actually providing meaningful critiques to resolve the issue then you're like what the fuck like the whole like the fucking like i know you know connor like the fucking left comms like basically who are like crazier than me basically are like ah eh, fuck this shit you're like fuck the government and they're like my freedoms and then they're like oh yo like uh, i don't know whatever this and that i'm like 
I understand the sentiment, but you're lever leveraging the critiques in a wrong way. Right, but the, okay, but but again, I, I just want to make sure that like the the audience understands what I'm saying and hopefully what GSU is saying. Like schools, federal institutions, and a whole bunch of people should decide what they're going to mandate from their employees and the people who enter their businesses. Citizens should decide on a voluntary basis what uh, what industries they're going to be able to participate in. Let's say Cracker Barrel says, no masks, no vaccines, we don't give a fuck, you do whatever the fuck you want. And then a bunch of fucking Cracker Barrel employees and a bunch of Cracker Barrel fucking uh, restaurant goers or whatever, they all get sick and they all get fucking COVID and they fucking die or whatever. That, like, ultimately, if the rest of the fucking people are making choices that are responsible and intelligent, then I do not want the federal government to be able to say, you have to take this fucking chemical and inject it in your fucking body. I don't want to set that precedent. I don't want that to be legal precedent. I don't want to give them that authority because I think it can be used for nefarious ends. And if you look at the fucking history of the, the United States even, uh, let alone other fucking countries, then that level of authority has been abused in the past. What about so, what about driving? You have to follow the speed limit, right? You, you have mm -hmm. to follow the limit. Oh, I have the freedom to drive. I have the freedom to go whatever speed i want but they're no, like have to follow no no, no that's make... that's that's fucking communism i paid sure the for the entire speedometer so... i'm gonna use the <laughs> but, but the but problem but the, but the problem comes is you drive a vehicle and then you're like oh i have the freedom to drive right i can drive i have the ability to drive and then from there you're like oh um i'm gonna drive as fucking as fast as i want i'm gonna do whatever i want on the road you would think uh no like that's gonna kill people but isn't that already illegal? I can ask you a question. Yeah, but, but, so, like, well, basically, you're basically can you're. We not, can we not lose this analogy though? Because we have licensing, we have age requirements, we have safety measures, we have uh, basically we ban aggressive drivers from uh, from uh, racing or from doing other kind of shit. We have all sorts of regulations. We control where people go using the highway. Uh, but you. So you're, 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 but you're basically us. accepting all of these things right here, but you're not accepting this. And it, I don't understand the analysis. Where is the analysis stopping and where is it starting? Be, because you can, you can get by in American society, but it's going to be very difficult without a car. The same way that you could get, a buy, or get by without being vaccinated, but you're not going to be able to participate in a lot of private and public institutions because most people aren't dumb fucks, or at least oh. uh, a third of people aren't dumb fucks, and they're pressuring another so third of people who are dumb fucks. So you're in favor of vaccine fucks. mandates? No, I want to reach, no. reach some people. Listen, if you don't want to have to worry about vaccine mandates, then just become a software engineer. You can work from home like I do. Mm -hmm. You don't have to worry about any of this. No, I guess I, I, I want to make sure we're on the same point, because uh, Connor said something earlier. Um, I, don't think represent. anyone here, and I, I don't think anyone here, and I don't think anyone that's anyone major i know any everyone advocates for every policy and politics but i don't think anyone's actually advocating for like mandating that you get the vaccine it's you get the vaccine or your life is going to become a lot more difficult that is the choice okay so you okay get the vaccine so or you can't go to the movie theaters okay so i think i i unfairly misrepresented myself go to sports games it's not that we are literally we are literally sending the the alphabet soup goon squad to knock on your door with vaccination needles. No one's saying that. Okay, so I I mean I'd be fine. Okay, so basically my <laughs> personal perspective, and I think I was saying this wrong cuz I think you were basically saying no vaccines at all or whatever. Basically I was like mm -mm. I was of the position that if you want to participate in society, you should do this. I feel like we were agreeing. I feel like we were just misunderstanding each other. Like, yeah. And, okay. And, yeah. And, 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 first, a free base of vaccine. I mean, yeah. if it's more I, I think effective. You're debating what you think, like, because there are a lot of anti-vaxxers out there who do think like that, but I don't think anyone in here is like that. And, you know, okay. People in here that are against I, mandates. I I don't know. I I was I was interpreting some stuff and I was really stun locked for a second. Okay. Uh, Divi. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I was just saying I don't think that we were misinterpreting each other. Um, I think that uh, we were flabbergasted by the flimsiness of your ideology. And Shut that's the fuck up! Kind of like hopping on for a long time. True, we, left libertarianism. I, I just, just want to make sure. I want to make sure that I heard you correctly earlier. Right? So when I brought up fast food and how how uh, people eating a lot of fast food negatively impacts the economy and society, all this stuff, mm -hmm. you said that we should ban McDonald's. We should go after McDonald's and, and take them down. Yes. Right? Do you do you, so? We should ban. Uh, <laughs> we should ban McDonald's because people like Big Macs. Like, 
I well, the problem comes. The problem. Crap card, and you just fucking fell right into that. Oh, I'll fucking bite this bullet every day, motherfucker. Okay, McDonald's holds a lot of influence. It has the ability to lobby for its own policies, and you know what? American people don't really have the ability to influence that. So we like hamburgers. You're gonna ban a company because people like purchasing their food? Like what the fuck? Wait, this guy said, "Yo, the drug problem. Yo, let's like let's just fix material conditions as if it's like." possible to completely fix it like he's just gonna say stuff well, y'all gotta understand that like he's coming from a ideological perspective yeah i'm coming from an ideological idea. perspective that i he feel like said, people being compelled or being driven to decisions that are well, bring negative ex 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 negative externalities to them they did it's a study in rats where the rats were the rats were given cocaine through their uh through their bottle feeder right and the rats mm -hmm. as soon as they got cocaine would keep going back and going back as long as the cage had nothing else in it as soon as they gave them a huge environment in which they could go enjoy playing in the environment and doing different things in the environment, they did cocaine they and then went and going you back for the cocaine. Reduce, no, 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 that's not true, Jason. There is, there is, there is <laughs> ties to, to that. <laughs> in the cage, then yes, yeah, but yeah, Jason, that, that's not true. There are a better way of living through, through, through better material conditions and better circumstances. Does that guarantee that people aren't going to do drugs? Hell no, it's not, because people like to have fun. People but aren't rats either. People who, the people who get addicted to it, who are having serious trouble with it, who usually result in the violence and the things that you talk about, the crime and all that, the desperation, they don't get that far because they Those have... The Welcome to the needs. Skinner box, motherfuckers. We're all birds in a cage. That's such a, I'm not sure like, people and rats are necessarily... GSU, you and I like are literally happens. birds in a cage. We're all, we're despite all our rage, we are still just a... Rat in a cage, okay? It's like I'm just saying, if you put me in a fun new environment with cocaine, I'm gonna do cocaine first, I'm right? Do the cocaine and then have yes. Fun. Wait, 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 wait. You're going to do the cocaine, but you're going to do it less. You're going to do the cocaine less, though. Yes, but you're still gonna do cocaine. Yes. Which makes it what? Basically, it, basically, Why would I do it basically, ba basically, how about it's like this? It's like this, well, okay? I got other shit to play with. Okay. It's it's cocaine? it's like this, yeah, okay? Sorry. It's like this. Cocaine is okay, overrated okay, as fuck. It's it's analogy, okay. This right? The study's legit. It's like no, it's well, like this. Jason, so you're you're actually wrong. They still did cocaine in the study, just not enough to kill themselves. Okay. So basically, the okay. Time they killed themselves doing cocaine. To bridge the gap, they just did cocaine. To bridge the cap, Connor. To bridge the cap, okay? To enjoy themselves. Okay. Bridging the gap. Bridging, bridging the gap, okay. That's my point. Bridging, that, the the many point times, is material conditions myself. alone wouldn't get rid of it. Okay, right? so bridging the... Wait, 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 wait. The, the goal here... Addiction that you see out of people who are no. in desperation and desperate All right. situations. To bridge the gap, right? I'm with you that people should, to some degree, have freedom to pursue stupid shit. Okay, I'm with you, 100%. However, basically, when you look at the freedom to pursue these, and then you think about all these other overriding institutions that basically say yo fuck your freedoms we're going to drive you to do these stupid shits and that's the problem is right people are driven to ma maximize these behaviors as kind of like a remedy of the fucking shit in their life even, even like you even, been advertising uh i don't know i haven't thought about it you don't know in advertising yeah i don't have a position about it because i haven't thought about it okay Basically, so, so if someone has a product, you, you might be okay, and they, they want to show this product to people. Yeah, like if they want it, if they, if they maybe if they want to show off the product, okay. maybe I'm okay with I mean, it. But I might be okay no, with, with them doing the this. But I, I might. Pushing it on everybody, I'm totally okay what? with it. But, but, but Newbie, you're not using the key word. You got to say abolish, and then he's just gonna say uh, yes. Uh, no matter what you say next. Hey, time. GSU, yes, shut the it. fuck up. Okay. <laughs> Basically, what I'm saying is, if people aren't like being influenced by the society, and they're like, hey, this seems all right. And then from there, like, okay. And then they, if they Everybody want to consume that. But advertising society, influences baby. people. Like, advertising is terrible. Yeah. Like, like, like fucking, fucking uh, Yeah, well, basically, maybe we could talk, we could talk about like reducing that. the amount of influence advertisement has on it. But I think, you, you know, it, you can. You can, you can absolutely, like you can reduce the amount of lobbying influences. You can kind of, like, no. maybe increase the no. amount, like, the FCC has on the fucking advertising community. God, like, and you guys thought I was a fascist. Holy shit. Oh, shut the, the fuck up, Doobie, okay? You literally want to get a load of brown uh, people, okay? Wait, I'm brown. Okay, I love Mexicans horse so much, I want them to be American. Yeah, yeah, that's how much I love them. I mean, yeah.
I hate Listen, you, Connor, for opening can of worms. Making Prime happy. Look at Prime's face, y'all. He's just like, yeah, he, he was he was tired before he started the stream. All right, Prime I tried to uh, er, to re-rail this conversation, and we have successfully yet again derailed it into why anarchism okay, sucks, yeah, which we, we, we all it, agree we with. I think this is we your all brain agree. on ideology. This is what happens. Yeah. Uh, wait, this is your brain on ideology. You want to institute a colonial regime? Shut up. God, wordy, so please. to answer the question, so though, long, if, if so Trump wordy. were to invoke an anti-mask, invoke an, an invoke an anti-mask uh, policy at the federal level, and people were dying as a result, I think that our our states and our local governments would stand up to that, and I think they'd be right to do so. There's a point at which we have to say there is context in the way in which we view our government and we view our political systems. We have to deal with in the context of what is here and now. And we are in a system in which there are checks and balances in place that afford us the ability to use the federal government to put checks in place when necessary, to use the state and local governments to put checks in place when necessary. So that being said, we are going to exercise use of our government as it exists now because we don't have a choice. It's what we are presented with here and now in the present. We can talk rhetorically about what may be someday somewhere but as it stands right now, if Donald Trump were to say anti-mask or I'm, I'm uh, banning mask mandates across the country and whatever, I'd say, you know what, this is time as we watch our citizens die, our fellow brothers and sisters die. This is a time where we stand up and say, you know what, our federal government's wrong on this. And that's called balance of power. Okay, and that's that exactly what our government is founded on. That was beautiful. I just want to give Wordy a little word of advice <laughs> that um you're falling directly in to doobie's trap he keeps bringing up anarchism and what you would do in your ideology but but what you need to just say and you could have just shut this shit down immediately mm -hmm. is that's not what we're doing here though like we're talking about vaccine mandates in america you know yeah. what joe biden is doing now you know what I mean? I'm not yeah. talking about my. I, yeah, that's that's on me. It's fantasy. like I get I get agitated, and then somebody says something, and I, I feel the need to respond. That's on no, me. No, I get it. I get it. I'm I'm observing this, and now I'm giving you public. Yeah. Uh, uh, Trust me, that's something my brother employs really? on me regularly Wait, let too. Let me ask you a question though. So, Wordy, if, if no, Trump no, no, was don't no, do it, no, Wordy. no, 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 I mean, I want to abolish the state, so like. <laughs> oh God damn it, Marty! Please, oh, no, this is not. We're doing it again. This is why, dude. You, you okay, are no, what, what's actually happening? Okay, what's actually happening? What's actually happening is this is what happens when, an a, an when a level a level, a level one anarchist meets a level ninety nine uh, authoritarian. Okay, it's gonna happen every single time. It's always gonna end up back at me. Well, no, no, Marty, no, no. Marty, the, the, I, have you on the, my side. the, no, uh, Doobie, shut the fuck up. Okay, basically, what it comes down to is, uh. Trump saying anti-mask is uh, bad. So basically, like, yo, Trump, stop. Like, you basically keep pressuring them. Say, hey, fucking change your tone. And that's what happened, right? He was initially kind of against the mask, and then he softened his tone. So, like, this is literally what literally happened. We so literally... I have that... I, I want to ask, because there was a couple of you, I think, at the beginning, who were, like, against a federal uh, mask mandate, right? Um, would you be against it still if the there was an alternative option, such as online schooling? So I would probably, at least from the beginning, say online schooling is a worse option than actually being in school. I'm saying you are losing something yes. by, by that. For but sure. I think kids going to school not wearing masks is also a pretty negative option that's, you know, spreading the vaccine, spreading the virus and stuff like that. So given a reasonable alternative, which would be online learning, would you be okay with doing a federal mask mandate in school? What do you mean? So uh, like you saying, have saying to wear it? You have to wear the mask, or you do online schooling. I'm okay and with that 100. percent That's I, I, exactly on point with where I would go with it. I still, I still think that local community should have the right to choose, but that would be my ideal. I, that's what I would choose for my local community. And uh, I guess my, I guess my question is: Does this exclu exclusively apply to education, or is this for like, like literally, like uh, when I hear federal mandate? I'm assuming like every place with like more than five people like that. That's kind of what I'm thinking. So I'm do you, do you mean schools. just schools? schools? Just schools? schools. Mm, like under yeah. the DOE, they're like everybody has to wear a mask. Um, yeah, but but they do. But they do have the alternative of going to virtual school. Uh, yeah, I'm okay with it because okay. because you're still you're still getting access to a high quality education. No. You're just not getting it the way that you want.
So I mean, what, let's be thing. honest. Why should, online why should, I don't think why they have the, the authority to do that, by the way. So have to, have to, why should the kids that are vulnerable have to sacrifice their information or their education because the parents of another kid are too selfish to either have the kid wear a mask or get vaccinated? Well, can I can I point this out because I saw GSU shaking his head and I I wanted to point this out as well. Well, I don't think they have the authority to do oh, that because wait, the, the, the public schools are, are funded by local yeah, municipalities. We, we we Actually, the DOE <laughs> is looking into, through their civil rights division, is looking to sue states mm -hmm. that have have put in these uh, ban on mask mandates for the reason that it violates the rights of children with disabilities. Yeah, that's fucking bullshit. Yeah, I mean, wait, that's the Connor, dumbest Connor, Connor. Bullshit. It's not Did bullshit. It, if you have saying? a child with asthma... Uh, various bronchial diseases, any kind of congenital no, 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 heart no, that's defect. Not what they are all affected by this. And you know what? That is 100% on point. They should that. Do is that is not the argument that they're so, making. So, Connor, I do have one question, though. Is like, what's frustrating for me is that basically you're like, okay, um, fucking... So what you're basically saying is if we institute policy, we should provide reasonable alternatives. This way people can at least live life Instead of just saying like you have to do this or you get nothing, is that what you're saying? Like for the car, for the driving, for the the vaccines and shit, is we should provide reasonable alternatives. So yeah, hun yeah, yeah. Sorry if that's yeah. not the question. Yeah, yeah. I I just wanted a yes or no on that. And then what about if people are asserting this that they want this unabridged freedom, and they don't want to deal with the consequences. The, this is uh, this is where being a conservative is actually really nice. Um, I don't think you can ever escape consequences. Uh, so when you're talking about like people ignoring mass mandates or not getting the vaccination or this, that, the other, even if they're barred from like 90 percent of uh, uh, public bases, even if they're barred from most restaurants, even if they're barred from most schools, chances are because they're going to be congregating with other people who are also not getting vaccinated, they're probably going to be exposed to the disease eventually, anyways. Um, and it's it, it's pretty. Uh, from everything that I've read, um, you know, plenty of people catch the disease and then bounce back, no consequences. Uh, but there's also a lot of people who have long-term negative uh, uh, health effects from the disease. There's also plenty of people who die. I literally have a, uh, th this is really unfortunate. I actually, um, I hate to share it during a shit post debate, um, but I have a 29 year old uh, cousin-in-law who has been on life support for 60 days now. Um, his his uh, hospital bill is like $2 million and they keep trying to take him off of life support. And uh, basically every time they take him off of life support, he crashes. And it's kind of getting to that position where um, they can't guarantee him the machine anymore. So they're not talking about like ending things right now, but they are taking treatments away. And basically if he doesn't improve, he's just going to fall out. And his wife, um, because both of them were anti-vax, I think she's in denial um, about what's happened because despite him dying from this disease uh, or potentially dying from this disease, she's still insisting on not getting vaccinated. Um, so what I'm saying here is that this shit, uh, and, and by the way, uh, uh, salt on the wound, they have two kids. So um, yeah, so, so this is where like, even if he recovers, he's going to be disabled for the rest of his life um, and he's going to be medically bankrupt. The the thing is, um, you know, you're, you're kind of talking about consequence like, oh, well, we need to impose consequences on these people so they make the right decision. Um, what I'm saying is there's no more visceral of an example of ignoring risk, assuming that you're special, um, assuming that, you know, uh, Jesus Christ is my immune system or some shit like that, um, and then having somebody in your community take this big of a fucking hit. And if you can't, I literally have a brother-in-law who refuses to be vaccinated and he's asthmatic. Um, so basically I tell these people, I tell them, it's like, hey, you're taking the fucking risk. Uh, but there's a, there's a strong chance or there's, there's a small but real chance you'll end up in a fucking box. And some people have listened to this and some people haven't. And ultimately, I don't think you can escape consequence one way or the other. But what if somebody else is Connor, being safe? I want to tell you, to your point, to your point, I feel you because I've lost two uncles to COVID that were anti-vaxxers. Both of their wives still will not get vaccinated. I have a cousin who was a marathon runner and is on, on oxygen now for the rest of her life. Uh, she will never be off oxygen, they've already told her, because of the damage to her lungs. Yeah, but... So right. I 100% feel you on that. That's 100% real. And th those are real experiences. And you know what? They are going to face those. They are going to face those. And you know what? 
But you're still going to have those that are going to say no. I'm not going to do it. But but the but the frustration. Like learn. But the frustration off. for me is like we hyper isolate, right? We take like somebody takes all the precautions, right? They uh, they uh, uh, do they uh, do the distancing. They do the ma- the mass like before the vaccinations, right? Everything we do, everything we possibly can. And then even after we take these actions themselves to try and mitigate the risk, and then somebody else comes in, you know, they're coming in with a Lambda variant after you get vaccinated, and then you're like, okay, well, I've taken all of the precautions, and I've taken every single thing I can personally do on my own free will, and this dumb fuck comes in with a worse strain that basically is not gonna, not, that makes me unable to have me taking all the actions, right? I do everything I possibly can, and then that dumb fuck comes in, and it's like, how do we resolve is, that issue? But this is so. Worried, this is one thing I wanted to touch on when, because you mentioned this in your intro. I think you and may be truly false. Like this appeal to returning to normalcy and not having to wear masks. Like we live in a global society that's very connected, unlike the past. So even if the vaccination rate was higher or whatever number you wanted, the risk of what you're talking about is still very real, which is why. I pushed for stuff like mass mandates and social distancing so much because like the Delta variant didn't come from the United States, right? It came from, I think, Europe, maybe India, Europe, India. India. I can't, yeah. I think Delta was India, Lambda, South America. Yeah, so so these new variants are going to pop up regardless. Yes. And that's why the conversation around the boosters, which I don't want to go into, is really interesting. But, um, but do, but yeah, do you so acknowledge we're... that these anti-vaxxers, while they may not be the originators, they are very much the perpetuators? Well, no. Can have a, yeah, I don't want to go into that. But I, I, I agree with you somewhere. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so, like, we, we have to do, understand that we're not going to be in whatever is normal for any time soon. I, I would, but, but we should okay, take okay, strict okay, steps okay, to try okay. and... Uh... To my audience, we are going to continue on to open walk on panel right after this. Um, I'm going to give these uh, individuals an outro, um, but we will have uh, open walk on panel. The content does not end. We're just giving an outro to these uh, individuals. If you have just uh, stumbled onto this channel, liking what you've seen so far, as frustrating as that was, um, then uh, be so kind as to hit that follow button right now. Make sure notifications are on so you know I'm going live. I do six nights a week. Don't want you to miss out on all of it. Um, exclamation point social in chat uh, to uh, follow us on uh, Twitter uh, for channel updates. For uh, jump to our Discord where we have all our conversations. Our open panel will be on in uh, Discord, and then of course YouTube where you will see our um, uh, what's it? Yeah, uh, our our vods. Our, all our vods live on YouTube. So uh, check it out, subscribe, like, and comment. But as you see there, it helps us out a ton. Uh, so yeah, not part of the YouTube, do that now. All right, so I'm going to give an outro. Once again, uh, we'll have content after this. The stream does not end, um, so uh, stick around. All right, uh, starting with uh, Captain A. Jones. Captain, uh, Captain my captain, uh, thank you uh, so much uh, for being here. Um, thank you for being a mod, a great mod here in this community, and a GFP sub. God, let them know. Uh, Captain, tell them a little about yourself. Uh, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Thanks for, for allowing me to be a part of the community and for, for growing such a, a community that I've, I've come to be a part of. Uh, I'm Captain A. Jones, not a Captain, not an A, not a Jones. You can find me on Twitch. You can find me on Twitter at C-T-T-A-J-O-N-E-S. And uh, yeah, I do stuff and things usually, you know, after I'm done with the day. And so I'm going to be smoking a lot of weed during those stuff and things. Like I like to think I have like 420 vibes on my channel. But um, I don't even know what that means, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. So, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Thank you, thank you. Next, Wordy. Uh, uh, hi. Thanks for, all, thanks for being here and participating. No problem. Uh, I guess this panel made me more depressed. So, um, the f- yeah, um, I'm just going to make an appeal here. Uh, get vaccinated, get masked. Um, please, for the love of God, don't kill your family. I don't want people to die. Like... That's that's my foundation is I don't want people to die. And the frustration for me that comes more than anything is what good are principles when people fucking die? And that's that's the whole question is I'm an anarchist. I want people to have maximized freedom, but I don't want them to hurt my own freedom. You know, like 
basically, I don't think that single institution should have control, but I think we as a society should collectively work to kind of do this shit. And that's the frustration for me. And more than anything is we say, oh, the state can fix the issues when the state creates the same damn issues in the first place. Fuck me. Okay. Thank you, thank you. All right, next. VIP. Counterpoints. Counterpoints uh, as well. Always, thanks for being around. Um, I would thank you even more vociferously if you had working internet. Uh, oh my God. Uh, yeah. yeah, sorry about that. Um, but we'll we'll work on it technologically. Um, if you want to help me with that, then you should uh, type in counterpoints common spelling into YouTube. You should uh, follow me on Twitter at underscore counterpoints underscore. Um, we, d we did break 10K and we're monetized now. So if you want to be a member or give me super chats while we're answering questions after the panel, um, then you can help fund my new computer uh, because it's not the internet. I have pretty fast internet. It's my uh, seven-year-old computer that can't keep up with all of my crazy OBS bullshit. Um, so anyways, the um, I want to encourage you. Uh, I'm broke right now because I'm moving between jobs, but um, please follow Prime, uh, sub to Prime, Donate bits, whatever. Um, you know, I, I love this. is one of the highlights of my week. It, it really is to come in and yell at strangers on the internet. Um, I identify as center center right. I'm a science fiction, political, and philosophy nerd. I'm a law enforcement and Marine Corps veteran. Um, so if any of that interests you, then uh, please follow me and give me a little bit of money so I can buy a better computer. And then Prime doesn't have to worry about me cutting out when I'm making such awesome points. And then I know this conversation was frustrating for Prime and he does appear tired. Um, but I did want to say it was productive in at least one way. I did realize, so I've never done cocaine in my life. But if I was going to do cocaine, then I would do it in a human-sized gerbil cage with Captain A. Jones because I think that would be a pretty fun way to have a first time on cocaine. So just yeah. let me come too because I want to have fun too. <laughs> <laughs> me, you, and two fifths of scotch, my friend. We're fixing y'all material conditions so y'all won't engage. Despite all my rage, I am still just a rat in the cage. <laughs> just saying, if I was that rat, I'd be gone. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. And that, that's all I got to say. Thanks, buddy. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, links are in chat. I've been putting those links in chat. Um, okay. Thank you. Next, uh, we have Truly False. Uh, first time uh, here. Yeah, first time here. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, thank you for having me on. Uh, <laughs> super fun. Love doing, love the uh, close panel. Love the walk on afterwards. So I'll probably still be there for all of you. Um, yeah, you can find me on discord.gg slash boopolitics and on twitch.tv slash boopolitics. We stream from people on there. Uh, the discord's great. I was nice to do in the beginning, but then he started to be mean. So, I mean, overall, if you want to join the second largest politics server, the one that doesn't have to, you know, purge their chats every once in a while to clear all the N-words out of it, then this is the one that you should join. Discord.gg slash boopolitics. Um, okay, thank you, thank you. Uh, next... What the, what the Christ? <laughs> oh my God! Yeah, oh, a, a dark lord and savior and nightmare fuel. Uh, Doobie, uh with us once again. Thank you, Doobie, for stopping by, being a part of all this. Uh, Doobie, yeah, have anything to say? Um, yeah, I had to come in really close for this. So, guys in chat, anarchism, not even once. Don't do it. It's a bad idea. Secondly, um, he's right. If you'd like a uh, Discord server, where you can talk to other li li libertarians about politics, just libertarians. If you make the mods upset, they're going to ban you. Go to Blue Politics. If you want some more fun, where people maybe drop the occasional racial slur, one, it's funny. Um, go to my server. It's way better. Uh, th this is discord.gg slash politics um, or politics.gg. The best and biggest politics server on Discord. Prime, thank you for having me. Connor, fuck you. Everyone else, I like you. <laughs> fuck you too, buddy. <laughs> Anonymous, thanks for the uh, hot tier one gift sub to uh, the channel to mask mask prime. Okay, interesting. All right, uh, do you still have to be up close? Do you still have to be zoomed in? I just no? like looking at you guys. Probably. Okay, all right, moving it's on. weird. I don't know why. Oh it's my weird. god, this is the worst. Uh, Jackson's <laughs> uh, this is so sorry. Uh, thank right. you for uh, stopping by uh, today and being part of all this. Well, yeah, I was happy to do it. Prime, oh, by the way, anybody that's uh, on my stream, definitely follow Prime, throw him some bits, throw him some love. I have been doing this for less than two months, and damn, he had me on this shit right here. So thank you all very, very much uh, for having me. Um, on top of that, uh, you can catch me on twitch.tv slash Jason underscore society. 
or twitter.com slash Jason Society. Funny enough, CounterPoints was one of the first streamers to follow me. I'm not sure why, but he saw something and decided to follow me, and I'm like, hey, all right, dude, rock and roll. So uh, other than that, I, I talk a lot about uh, cam- cannabis reform, uh, criminal justice reform, where it relates to nonviolent drug offenses and workers' rights. Please, please go ahead and follow me when you can. I appreciate it. And again, follow Prime, subscribe to Prime, give him lots of love because he's given lots of love back to the community. Thank you, thank you. Uh, next, Automatic Pan, who I skipped originally and I still feel bad about that. Um, Pan, uh, who has been part of our Open Panels a bunch, and we appreciate having him there. Um, tell us about yourself. Yeah, um, uh, I love uh, these Open Panels and stuff. It's really fun to get to talk to you guys. Um, uh, come to my channel, uh, you know, follow follow me on Twitter, Problematic Pan for both. Uh, it's really fun to know you all. You don't need to give me your money, just your clout. Give your money to Prime. Um, I hope to have, uh, I guess, to, for content, I do a lot of uh, libertarian stuff, but with a heavy progressive social leanings. So we talk about, you know, all the issues that matter in the best way possible. Come follow me. Come say hi or don't. That's up to you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and last but not least, GSU Gambit, one of our, uh, honestly, one of our most amazing guests, uh, does a lot uh, for this community uh, behind the scenes, and is just overall a really kind guy. Thank you, GSU Gambit, for being here, being part of this. Um, tell a little about yourself. Oh, I am, oh yeah, it's on mute. Okay. I am GSU Gambit. Um, I stream occasionally. I'm going to start trying to stream a little bit more. Um, I stream about politics, sometimes playing games. Uh, what I'm planning to start maybe next month or maybe at the latter part of this month is I'm going to start building applications on stream so people that want or want to learn about software engineering are already in it and want to learn more. Um, I'm going to start just building random stuff on stream apps that I think about. But, um, but yeah, uh, you should definitely uh, follow and sub to Prime. Uh, if you want to follow me, you can hit uh, Bang BBC inside of Prime's chat, and that will be the link to my Twitch. But yeah, Prime, appreciate it. Everybody else, it was fun, worthy. You know, I'm sorry we have to antagonize you a bit, but you usually <laughs> take debate, so it's pretty cool. Um, I don't want to stray into a bestiality debate right at the end here, but does it not look like <laughs> Doobie is waiting for the money shot right now? Like Dang. the frog. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> that the only one? Oh. No, I mean that analogy is creepily accurate. Well, well oh, oh, by the way, by the way, Captain no! Jones, I want you on for a political stoner stream. Oh, I'm fucking oh. down. Oh, okay, all right. Me up. He's got to get right. his. He's got to get his hot tub stream going first. Doobie, oh I thought you had some shame, and then you opened your mouth. What the <laughs> fuck? Like, he did it. Jesus Christ. <laughs> So, all right. Well, anyway, this is uh, to my audience. We wanna, we're gonna continue on to open walk on panel, uh, and we'll end we'll end to this nightmare. Honestly, and, uh, well, uh, and put an end to my nightmare right now. Uh, anyone luck, here buddy. can join us, but if not, that's okay. Thank you for spending your time, your energy, uh, your knowledge, and your passion. My community, I know they appreciate you so much. As I do. Have a good one. Catch you, buddy. Thank you. God, so sorry. I'm so sorry, dude. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I forgive you. It's okay, y'all. Yo, it's I don't okay. know why, but the up close camera is, is weird. Bro. <laughs> no, I'm not gonna do that again. You no, look high, too. Like, it's super stoned. Well, now I'm depressed. Great. It, did, it did look a little odd. I, I loved it, to be honest. <laughs> I don't know why, but yeah, it's, it's, I don't know. It was mad weird to me. All right. Um, yeah, I think Doobie, Doobie, you're my favorite up. authoritarian. Keep up the good work, King. <laughs> Keep being a monarchist. Monarchist I, frog. I'm just... My viewers love you. <sighs> I'm going to eat dinner, then I'll see some of you on the open panel, maybe. Peace. See you later. I'll be there. Trying yeah. not to cry inside, I guess. Oh, my God. Uh, okay, full, truly false. I love you, okay? I'm sorry. I just got to He's I gone. insult you. Oh, he's already gone. Okay, fuck, fuck that guy. Okay. You're beautiful. Bye. Jersey. Oh, okay. yeah, I'm so Jersey. I'm gonna be Jersey. here for the rest of the for the rest of the year, more than likely. Really? Oh, more Lordy. than likely. 
That's where in Jersey? Up. Hold on. Where in Jersey? I'm in the island, the shit ass part of Jersey. I'm, I'm, I'm supposed to be in. I'm, I'm going to work out of the shit out of Fox. Yeah, it's like the street. part of Jersey. I look out, I That's look the outside. whole fucking state. That's the whole fucking state. I'm on the ninth floor of this building. I look outside and all I see is shit. That's the whole fucking what? state, dude. That's the whole fucking state. Well, that's where I'm at. Shit. It's good. You're in the whole state. Yeah, but where I'm supposed to be at tomorrow morning is McGuire Air Force Base. Did you really fucking do that, Jennifer? Who's what coughing? Is that cunt? Rachel coughing? Hey, no, that's, that's gonna be.